see that Brighton, you know, were playing well but not scoring goals, but they put three past Liverpool, four past West Ham, five past Leicester, six last week past Wolves. They hammered Potters, Chelsea, 4-1, and they had two three-all draws as well. Brighton, yes, they score goals, they play great football, and this is the place for entertainment as well. Joint fifth highest scorers in the Premier League. There are some down moments as well with Brighton. They took only one point in two games from Nottingham Forest. They got doubled by Fulham and probably what hurt even more than that, they were doubled by Tottenham Hotspur. But this stadium is full of fans, some of whom, and listen, this is a big stadium compared to where they were when they were at the Widdeen, which really wasn't a football stadium at all, even at the Goldstone, when they shared with Gillingham at Priestfield. And the story is well known and well documented. But some of these fans in here tonight will have been through those hard times and they actually won't be able to believe what's going on in front of their very eyes. When a year ago this week, they thrashed Manchester United 4-0 and here they are tonight playing a Premier League game against that self-same Manchester United side knowing that if they get enough points from the remaining fixtures that they've got, albeit some tricky games for Brighton between now and the end of the season and a heavy fixture schedule they've got games in hand they play twice a week between now and the end of the month twice a week between now and the end of the season but they know that European place is most definitely in their hands the first time these Brighton fans will have been able to go on a European tour from having no ground at all what less than 15 years ago and here they are on the brink of European football and they're playing some great stuff as well. You heard the commentary on Talk Sports, Scott Minto saying, what a time to be a Brighton fan. They're having an absolute ball in here and they're loving it. And more and more people could come and see it because of this quality new stadium, the American Express Community Stadium here in Sussex. So the team's about to take the fields as the officials lead them out as Andre Mariner picks up the ball from the plinth. And out come Brighton. And out come Manchester United. Day 25 of 25 consecutive days of live commentaries on TalkSport. And we come to one of the stories of the season here at Brighton. It's a city that voted Remain back in 2016. And now they're desperate to get into Europe in 2023. Meantime, their opponents are desperate to get back into Europe's top competition, the Champions League. Plenty to play for. Brighton against Man United. Live and exclusive on TalkSport with former England captain Stuart Pearce alongside TalkSport's chief football commentator, Sam Matterface. Thanks, Adrian. Evening, everyone. The talk on the terraces at City was about winning it at Brighton. But whereas Manchester City are excited by the possibility of a coronation by the sea, Manchester United are worrying about being locked out of the crown jewels should they suffer a defeat here. Once the princes of the Premier League, now just members of the extended royal family. Manchester United's main task this season has been to restore pride. One trophy, two cup finals and back at the big banquet that is the Champions League will do that. But there might be one last little challenge to their authority that they have to see off. Brighton pledge allegiance only to themselves and fancy a feast at that top table. They are having the best league season in their history. They have a regal home record and if they win today, there is every chance that they will be going on their first state visit to Europe. Here's the team news. A few shift arounds, four changes for each. Brighton in blue and white stripes and white shorts, white socks. Manchester United in red shirts, black shorts and black socks. Brighton start with Jason Steele in goal. Caicedo, we understand, is going to move into the right back position today. Adam Webster, Duncan, Esther Pinyan make up the back four. Buonanotte plays on the right side, Matoma on the left, McAllister Gilmore, and then in CISO behind Danny Welbeck in attack. David De Gea is in goal for Manchester United. Juan Bissaka, Lindelof, Shaw and Dallow the back four. Casemiro will hold. Anthony, one of four changes. Fernandez, Fred and Rashford play behind Martial. Christian Eriksen left on the bench today because of some managing of the minutes, I think. He can't really play three games in a week at this stage of the season. Andre Mariner is the referee. Dan Robotham and Natalie Aspinall 
are the two assistants, Natalie Aspinall, the third female to officiate in the Premier League. The VAR is Andy Madley. The fourth official is Chris Kavanagh. Atmosphere is cracking, isn't it? They're full of anticipation for a big performance again tonight, Stuart. Um, listen, Brighton have pushed the bar up for everything. Off the football pitch, our football club should be run. Training facilities, match facilities, uh, sensibility of ballroom and owner. Just incredible what they've got here. And level of expectancy from the team is up there as well. Well, last night the King was crowned in Manchester. Record-breaking Haaland shot City back to the top. On Saturday, Sam Allardyce becomes the grand old Duke of Yorkshire. Game day live will come from Ellen Road to see how his men get on against the establishment. We've got live commentary from Spurs, West Ham, Forest as we drift into Europe once again next week. There's so much football, you just don't want to turn your radio off because it is unmissable. Talk Sports, Stuart Pearce, former Forest captain and manager, is alongside me in Brighton tonight, and we're underway with Manchester United attacking the goal away to our left in the first half in those red shirts, and Bruno Fernandes just attempts to play the ball round the corner, just quickly up towards Anthony Martial. Doesn't quite work out for him, and it goes out towards the far side. Anthony progressing down the right side, back in the team today. Gives him a different dimension. Yeah, as I say, they've, they've got a nice way about Brighton. I've always found it very, very difficult to line up against them tactically. They, they get this high numbers in the centre area of the pitch, boxes of four, that type of thing. Martial bending his run and trying to get into the penalty area, away to our left-hand side. Doesn't quite manage to do that before Jason Steele comes to the perimeter of his penalty area. Jason Steele, who dislodged Robert Sanchez as the number one goalkeeper for Brighton because Roberto De Zerbi says he just suits the way we want to play. And when these two met at Wembley, it was cagey. United sat off, didn't want to get sucked in. Brighton weren't at their best. It'll be fascinating to, fascinating to see what sort of game we get tonight. Fred wins the ball in midfield. Casemiro finds Fernandez, who slips it into the area. Anthony with the first shot on goal, steers it wide of the left hand upright. It's a big let off for Brighton, that. Quick, sharp start from Manchester United, who have looked at the races since the whistle blew two minutes ago. They were very quick off their mark there. And as the ball was won in midfield, Fred, Casemiro, and then Fernandez combining to set Anthony away. And he probably should have hit the target as he was played through on the edge of the area. You've got to say, straight ball, diagonal run, bisected the uh, Brighton back line. And you've got to score there, to be honest with you, Sam. To miss the target is a bit of a crime. Goalie's got to make the save. And dunk uncharacteristically there giving the ball away a little bit loosely to Fred but ball popped out for a goal kick two minutes played you're listening to Talk Sport and it's Brighton and Hove Albion nil Manchester United nil Roberto De Serbi standing on the touchline has been under the weather a little bit over the course of the last 48 hours he looks OK. Matoma coming forward for Brighton. Quickly tries to release the ball towards the edge of the penalty area where Buonanotto was waiting for it. Went back to David De Gea. A few Brighton fans thought he was a little bit iffy with his feet there, but he found a crisp enough pass into the left fullback position and to Diego Dallo. Fred has it in midfield. Pressing up on the halfway line. Brighton trying to win it back. Caicedo, who's playing at right back today. Gets it back to Jason Steele, who then kicks high into the evening sky, the beautiful evening sky. The sloping roofs of this wonderful bowl, Amex Stadium, in the uh, middle of the Sussex countryside, has got uh, a wonderful backdrop to it tonight. This beautiful blue sky on a wonderful early summer's evening. Of a state by Lindelof, he's given it straight to the turn, right to the air, right footed shot. Oh, he smacked it straight into the face of David De Gea whose head has just made probably one of the saves of the season, stopping Brighton from going in front. They should be in front, and it's only because David De Gea took one full in the face, it might well have knocked him out, but they are not on the scoreboard. Stuart Pearce. I've got to say, we're less than four minutes in now, and we've had two absolutely wonderful chances, one at each end, and uh, give away on that occasion. We see it so often now in modern-day football. Teams trying to play out from the back, getting caught with the ball, and Matomo should have done better. He's ended up hitting the ball and caught De Gea looking at the replay right on the temple. You and I 
are both suggesting that I don't know whether it knocked him out cold but with the concussion protocol I wonder whether he'll be carrying on Sam yeah well obviously Manchester United will assess him now and there might be a little bit of a delay as a result of that Manchester United do have experienced goalkeepers available to them Tom Heaton is one of their number but not on the bench tonight Jack Butland certainly is and he will be out warming up now way to our left hand side making sure that he goes through his preparations just in case he's required to take over from David De Gea now Matoma might look back on that chance as Anthony will look back on the one in the first two minutes and say I should have done better there well there's no doubt he should have done better um, both players I think should have done better in the situations they're in the only thing you can say with Matomo is hit the target I think either side of the goalkeeper that's in the back of the net and you know, as I say I'll, I'll be astounded if he carries on he don't look medical. great does he he looks very groggy he's on the floor away to our right getting attention Jack Butler is warming up the, the Manchester United goalkeeper David De Gea who took it full in the face has gone level with Alex Stepney in 7th place on Manchester United's all time appearance list tonight and Jack Butland away to our left hand side just doing his uh, laces up has been uh, linked with a move to Scottish football in the summer he actually was talking to a Scottish journalist about that very subject just last week and uh, he hasn't played too much for Manchester United since turning up he hasn't even made his debut for the team yet he's been an unused sub for 13 games he hasn't played for Crystal Palace either who he's on loan from but he is going to uh, come on here I think because he's getting stripped and ready for action his last appearance was uh, May 2022 against Everton he broke his finger in the pre-season and as a result of that became surplus to requirements down at Selhurst Park David De Gea is bloodshot eyed red faced he's got to his feet now Jack Butland is getting ready as if he's going to come on I'm not sure whether or not the physios are convincing David De Gea that he has to be taken off but because of the concussion protocols the way they are they'll be able to sub him out without using a substitution it's only prudent isn't it Sam this, these are the, probably the situations where you know if he carries on there's going to be big big question marks asked about the medical team the protocol all of those type of things I think if he was an outfield player the ball's hit him on the head Sam and he's got, gone down he, he knows the ball's in the penalty box somewhere but he's took no action to get himself up I think he's sort of semi I wouldn't say unconscious but certainly semi that way and for him to carry on I find it's quite incredible really but questions asked about the concussion protocol well and also I, I mean look from a from a human point of view and that's the most important thing do you take a risk in this situation or do you not because it's a goalkeeper it's such a crucial position you, you tend not to want to make an early substitution but sometimes it can actually cause you more harm than good not only personally and that is a big concern and the primary concern but actually from a footballing point of view as well is it the right thing to do well it's difficult you know wild horses couldn't drag me off a pitch if I was injured or you know felt as I could carry on I was too scared to come off and think that in 15-20 minutes I was alright to carry on so I never did and probably come from a different era but I've just seen an instance there that I think why concussion and the protocol was brought into the game and the game's basically ignored it should, should there be someone independent that is telling Manchester United they have to make a substitution well once again that's really difficult I've been at the sharp end Sam in teams and I wouldn't want someone independent telling my medical team and me as a manager what should and shouldn't happen what? really difficult but I think he should have left the pitch if I'm being honest with you on what I've seen eight minutes played but only five have been really have the ball in action and Manchester United have already got a doubt over their goalkeeper away to our right hand side we'll keep an eye on it it's back with Jason Steele away to our left hand side and Manchester United just allowing Brighton to have the ball as they did in the Wembley semi-final those two centre-backs exchange passes quite a lot Manchester United don't want to get sucked in to a pressing game where they can get beaten over the top or get played through easily I'm just looking at uh, it's Billy Gilmore and McAllister at the, the base of uh, Brighton's midfield and, and they've just gone two on two with Fernandez and Fred and Fred's got himself around McAllister I don't know whether 
they, they've looked at that and thought, you know what, we need to nullify this boy tonight. Well, no, no is the score. You're listening to Talk Sport, and already we've had a couple of big incidents, two big chances and a serious injury to the goalkeeper, David De Gea. Ball back on the edge of the penalty area by Esther Pinyan to Jason Still, invites a bit of pressure from Martial and then clips it out towards the far side. Elegant pass, headed down by Esther Pinyan, and then escaping was McAllister, but he's harassed and gets away with it. Welbeck up to halfway. Casemiro turns it over, and now Rashford races forward through the legs of Dunk, edge of the area, feeds Anthony, who cuts in on his left foot, then waits, gives it to Fernandez and blasts it over the top of the crossbar. Well, I've got to say, we have got a magnificently open game on our hands here. Two two teams that, in possession, have been very, very intricate, cutting the opposition open. And when they've spread to play, if they've lost possession, either team, the opposition have been straight at them. And I'm just looking for the tactical nous as well of Dunk. Dunk's been quite happy to go from a centre-half position, squeezing all the way in in midfield to go and pick up uh, midfield players or strikers that have dropped deep. Billy Gilmore, the youngster, on the ball inside the centre circle, clips it over the top for Esther Pinyan to chase from left fullback into almost inside left position. Across goes Wambasaka, wins that duel and sends it back into the 18 yard box where it's cleared away by Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw up to Fernandez, Fernandez up to Rashford. Rashford trying to get away from Caicedo, it's going to be a free kick on the halfway line. Here's a question for you Caicedo playing it right back tonight yeah how difficult is it when you're not in your natural position to go into one of those positions I find it very difficult to be fair uh, you know I think it'd probably be easier for, for someone like him to go and right back than it probably will be for a full back to go into the midfield slot and I'm just seeing a lot of spaces here you watch Dunk in free play he's going all the way into midfield on occasion sometimes with Martial sometimes he's stepping beyond him and going with Fred but what that's doing is leaving a lot of space behind they're almost 3v3 on the halfway line spaced out right across the uh, halfway line and Manchester United have started quite brightly and certainly look at it referee uh, has given a free kick over on the far side Andre Mariner and he's given that to Brighton and Hove Albion and it's going to be a free kick which is quickly taken by uh, Manchester United out towards the near side Brighton not happy about the award of that free kick Dallow plays it out towards the near side he twists away from uh, Juan Adeke and then it's won back by Billy Gilmore high up inside United territory taken on by Enciso who gets it away from Casemiro then wins it back then David De Gea kicks it clear and then Caicedo sends it back to the edge of the penalty area it's a fast open game in the opening 11 and a half minutes on Talk Sport Caicedo tries to get there ahead of Rashford in the left wing position tonight he's playing off the left this evening Marcus Rashford and it goes all the way through to Adam Webster at the heart of the Brighton defence I'll tell you what he's shown already Casado he's got an aptitude to read play and he's also got the pace almost to match Rashford which might be important this evening 12 minutes gone Brighton will go six for the win and above uh, Tottenham and Aston Villa here's Enciso out towards Matoma Matoma inside the penalty here cuts in on his right foot he's allowed to wander teases it to the far corner and misses the upright by just a couple of centimetres lovely ball control and command from the Japanese international who took the ball down wandered in field right footed and sent it towards the far post big chance that his second big chance of the game it certainly was when he weaved into the box you could see players they, they didn't want to go close to him didn't want to commit to the foul in any way shape or form and he's done everything right but maybe offered it outside the post a little bit too much I'll tell you what teams playing out from the back is absolutely semi-suicide I think you know now United might play through them and score now but both teams happy to play out from the back. If you get your press right, you'll get chances. Have a quick listen to Alan Brazil on the sports uh, breakfast and he will reiterate that quite often uh, of a morning. When it works, it really, really works, doesn't it? And you, you look at Pep's team and you look at the way Brighton do it and have done it for the most part of this season, it certainly can have it, huge benefits to the way that football has progressed over the last few years. But 
there is risk attached to it. It is at times a bit of a gamble, and both these teams have turned the ball over high up inside opposition territory at one time or another already tonight. And we've only played 14 minutes. They've given the ball away again, Brighton inside their own half. And Fred trying to win it back from McAllister, who's trying to turn in a tight area. Fred's chopped him. Referee has given a free kick eventually to Brighton, although it was delayed. They probably deserved a uh, free kick, that. Well, the thing is, it looked as though um, the referee was going to play on for one moment. Then all of a sudden, when uh, Brighton broke through the initial press and the foul, he, uh, he blew his whistle. So it's uh, certainly deserving let the fourth official know about it. Uh, he's got a habit of uh, making sure that his voice is heard rather uh, often. Roberto De Zerbi has had a, a couple of uh, incidents with officials over the course of the season. Nil nil the score. You're listening to uh, Talk Sport. Here's Dallow up towards the halfway line, turning it round the corner. And then it's cut out by Gilmore and sent all the way through to Jason Steele. Jack Butler certainly sat down now. And obviously they believe that David De Gea is OK. In fact, since that initial incident where he was knocked to the floor, that was 10 minutes ago, David De Gea has had nothing to do. He hasn't even seen the ball. I think he's kicked it twice. Yeah, he's had a couple of clearances. That's been about it. But he certainly looks as though he's got his faculties about him now. Uh, here is Rashford. Back to uh, Luke Shaw. And once again, David De Gea has the ball at his feet. You're listening to Talk Sport. It's nil-nil on a uh, Wednesday night. And the Matoma putting pressure on Wamba Saka again. Just a little bit sloppy in possession. Ball cleared by uh, De Gea and then brilliantly touched by uh, Martial into Anthony. One back by McAllister, the World Cup winner, and cleared to the far side. Ball out on the left with Matoma, the Japanese once again. What a great start to the game. Weaving one way, then the other, getting to the byline, standing up, Awan Bissaka, taking him on for a third time, poking it towards the near post. It goes out in the way for a corner kick over on the far side. This is Talk Sport. Sam, um, I've seen 15 minutes of football and I'm going to stick my neck out and say this is the best 15 minutes of a start of a game I've ever seen this season. The quality on show is absolutely brilliant. The cutting edge from both teams is that good. The pressing's really good and the tactical matchups are fantastic. Well, they'll still have two games on Liverpool if they do go six tonight, Brighton with a victory. Manchester United will go above Newcastle with a win one point clear of the two. They're defending a corner kick on the far side, whipped in towards the near post. Up there is Webster with a header, and it's planted into the arms of David De Gea, who rises after it went into the ground and up high towards the crossbar. He immediately dispatched it upfield, looking for Anthony. Anthony's put pressure on uh, Esther Pinyan, who initially looked as if he was going to suffer a little bit, but recovered. And Anthony's slowly getting back to his feet. Nil-nil. Here is Lewis Dunk moving up towards the halfway line. Infield it goes to Danny Welbeck who drops deep. Brighton aiming to win three league games in a row against Manchester United for the first time in their history. And before the last two wins that they racked up, they'd only ever won three of 17 in top flight competition against the Red Devils. But times are changing here at Brighton. This is a very different Brighton to uh, the one that uh, got to the cup final in 1983. 40 years ago here is Welbeck that was their last great team lots of people if you speak to Seagulls fans will tell you this is the best they've ever seen in blue and white striped shirts Caicedo into Enciso and then back to Buonanotte who tries to travel infield only made his first start at the weekend Facundo Buonanotte of Argentina he scored in that first start he's 18 years and 129 days old Carlos Tevez was his manager at Rosario and he said he's the best I've seen since Lionel Messi well wow. like you need that <laughs> Mitoma into the area jinx pass Wambasaka left the leg dangling out referee said no play on and Manchester United swept the ball up the other end and Rashford is powering away into the penalty area playing in by Fernandes Rashford towards the near post blocked by Caicedo out for a corner the referee's not very popular because he didn't give a penalty against Juan Bissaka for his foul, perceived foul on Mitoma. What do you think, Stuart Pearce? Yeah, to be fair, I think he should have been booked for diving. That's my personal opinion. Obviously, that particular element has gone out of football. It was a pathetic dive. I'm just watching it again. But until referees start doing something about that, then the game's never going to be cleared of that ill, I don't think. 
but once again United swept the ball from one end to the other and uh, good recovery from Casado that managed to stop Rashford. United have had three good chances so far in the game. It's nil-nil. Brighton have had one very good one. Almost knocked out David De Gea. Here's Fernandez Back to Shaw. Shaw now. Ten yards short of the penalty area. Plays it square. It's picked up by Wan-Bissaka. Work to the far side. In from Dallow uh, to Anthony once again. And then out towards the right side and Casemiro. Who produces a cross into the box. Still punches it. Does well the former Middlesbrough goalkeeper. And then a jump by Anthony, it goes over his head, but Fred wins it back once again. And then, oh, it's behind Rashford. A little touch by Fernandez, brilliant. Gets away from uh, Bonanotte. Down in the left wing position, Rashford traces. And then it's Webster who plays out. Well, Beck, and then it plays into midfield. And he can't keep it in, Bonanotte, on this right-hand side. But what a terrific game this is. It's non-stop, complete. I mean, I would say it's almost chaotic but it's better than that because it's so much in terms of quality, the sharpness of pass, the speed of thought, the quickness of play, the high pressing. It's all worked so far. Martial trying to run in behind and off Webster. Gets it back to Anthony into the side netting. He thinks he got a touch off Jason Steele as he dived to his right-hand side. It was another well-worked United move. I'll tell you, the, the biggest shame that probably all the supporters and us in the media have got that we're not privy to the tactical uh, prelude that, that both teams have had leading into this game. Yeah, we'd love to know what they were trying to do and exactly. then be able to and say 10 out of 10, that. if that's the case. Exactly, because what we're seeing at the moment, in my opinion, is footballing excellence in regard to the tactical matchups between the players, the intricacies of, of both teams and everything that the game should be about is here on show. It, it's so good, this game. Oh. Brighton playing around inside their 18-yard box, but doing it with precision, inviting pressure, almost giving the ball away. Then Jason still managing to get it out towards the far side. They play across their area to Webster and then bring the ball out with elegance up to Danny Welbeck, who's pressed by Luke Shaw, who's the centre-back, the left centre-back. And he's come 50 yards into the Brighton half, out of his position, into the Brighton half to nab that back. He gives away a free kick. 21 gone, nil-nil somehow, nil-nil. Here is Welbeck moving over halfway, out towards the right and now Caicedo, who's a good 30 yards inside opposition territory. He plays it square to Gilmore, round the corner from McAllister. And then uh, Bonanotte, who's had a lot of touches with the ball in the opening 21 minutes, sends it back and it's picked up by Welbeck from a Webster head around the corner, looking for Caicedo, who's in behind Dallo, gets to the byline, being chased out to the corner of the penalty, takes a deflection, goes to the six-yard box. Wambasaka reacted faster than anybody else before Bonanotte could get there. And it's cleared out on this near touchdown and away for a throw. Well, you asked me how uh, Casado would fare at right back. Well, he's actually the best fullback on the pitch at this moment in time and what I'm seeing. <laughs> well, I thought it's really interesting. You know, when we went to Wembley and we watched these two teams play one another, it was a really tight, cagey affair. It, it, there wasn't much expression in terms of this ability to play the ball out from the back, United pressing and then go and see what happens after that there was a lot more sort of United stepping off allowing Brighton to have the ball not forcing the issue because they didn't want to get sucked in but this is completely different isn't it it's almost as if they've gone back re-watched that game and thought right okay how can we improve on that both of them that's exactly what both teams and both managers would have done they would have analysed that game uh, I thought Brighton deserved to probably win the game over 90 minutes my personal opinion in the, in the semi-final uh, but tonight there's two teams come out offering a, a very very different type of game and it, it's oh, for us as, as neutrals it's been magnificent well Manchester United away from home against the teams in the top nine their form is frightening they've taken just one point from those games and conceded 27 goals and that sort of suggests a, a softness on the road that Ten Hag wants to and has to sort out if they're to be competitors for the Premier League next season which is his uh, stated aim but they haven't started too badly here and they've had three good chances so far to open the scoring but it remains nil-nil they have the ball now with Casemiro who blindly played that forward didn't find Rashford Casado turns it over Welbeck comes forward but Casemiro does his job intervenes McAllister wins it back Bruno Fernandes has his foot stamped on didn't like that very much it's played square and now here's Esther Pinyan who moves up towards the edge of the United box wide on the left is the tricky Matoma he goes on the outside to the byline another good intervention from Wan-Bissaka one of those huge long pipe cleaner legs wraps itself around the 
the Japanese and Manchester United are away again um, tackled by uh, Webster was well timed beat uh, Marshy out of the ball and it's been turned away and the Manchester United counter attack has been thwarted and Brighton have got the ball again 10 yards in front of the centre circle McAllister moves forward plays it low and down to the left hand side Matoma with a cross this time headed away by Shaw headed further away by Fernandez and then chested down by Martial and into Fred Fred to Fernandez and Manchester United are going forward again look at the run from Rashford into out and then he's gone over the top and he's just trying to get on to the end of that and almost did it was laser guided that pass forward from Bruno Fernandez and if Rashford had got on the end of it Steele had come to the edge of his penalty area and was stranded I've got to say when Fernandez picked the ball up you thought what's he going to do with this the movement and the ball were absolute precision bar maybe half an ounce of weight I think on the ball Rashford's movement to, to go left and then spin right behind the central defender and the ball was, was just magnificent and just a fraction too hard well Brighton are used to these fast starts Usually they get on the score sheet. They've scored more goals than anyone else in the opening 15 minutes of games, but they could have conceded a goal in the opening 15 minutes of this game. Um, Rashford now trying to pick out Martial. It's cleared away. Matoma picks it up. He's been brilliant so far. Casemiro gets there. And then Fernandez, edge of the centre circle, brings wan Saka into play. He gallops down the right-hand side. He's got support from Anthony. Plays it wide. Anthony waits, delivers a cross in towards the near post and Dunk has to react and jettison his head out to push the ball behind and away for a corner because Martial was coming in behind him into the penalty area to be a real threat, nil-nil. Well, I've not covered too many Brighton games this year, very few in fact, but I tell you what, these fans here, if this is the fair that's on offer every week, it's just magnificent, it really is. And I think United have played their part in fueling that as well. Corner kick to be taken by Shaw over on the far side. And Rashford is right on the edge of the D here. And no one's really paying too much attention to him. Shaw's cross is delivered in towards Casemiro with a header. It's only narrowly over the top. Well, he got up above his marker really well there, the Brazilian Casemiro. And he headed the ball with some force towards Jason Steele's goal. And it must have been less than a foot over the top of the crossbar. Yeah, on first viewing, I thought Jason Steele should have come with the loft on the ball should have come and helped his uh, back line out but looking at it there was too much curl on it away from him he couldn't have got anywhere near it Brighton are a force to be reckoned with remember when they looked pretty but couldn't finish well Roberto De Zerbi has sharpened the focus he is only the seventh Premier League manager whose side have scored 50 or more goals in his first 25 games in charge. Not sure what that says about what went on before, but they certainly started to put the ball in the back of the net with more regularity. They haven't done that too much uh, today. In fact, they've only really had one big chance since the opening few minutes. They've created half chances since then. Manchester United have had the better ones, but it remains nil-nil, 27 gone. Brighton have looked a threat, so have Manchester United. Both so far have been defensively OK. Nil-nil. Just looking at these two, Webster and Dunk, they've been absolute colossuses for many years, haven't they, for Brighton? And they're probably playing as well as they ever have done. I think Dunk's been certainly magnificent this year. Started the last 45 Premier League games, Lewis Dunk. Adam Webster has played in the top five divisions in England and played at Wembley for his club as well since his £20 million move to, uh, from Bristol City. So he's, uh, he's had some experience up and down the leagues before he got here. And he's had some experiences since he's been here. And he may be going on a European tour. Ball up towards Fred, who's inside the Brighton half of the field. It's swept by Fernandez out towards the wide left. And Rashford takes it on. Takes on Caicedo. Goes on the outside. Shoots towards the near post. Saved down low by Steele. Who, after Caicedo was shown a clear, clean pair of heels by Marcus Rashford, made a really good save, actually, dropping down to his right and uh, repelling that effort from Marcus Rashford. Yeah, you're not. It worked it really well. Fernandez sliding it out to Rashford and Casado saying, you're not coming in and shooting, but he showed too much outside space to him and Rashford's good enough. A burst of space and he's created a yard and still done well guarding his near post. Yeah, had to because uh, if Rashford had just gone a slightly little bit higher... He would have managed to penetrate that goal away to our left-hand side and United have got another corner kick taken by Fernandez, driven towards the edge of the box, worked to Anthony, left-footed, it goes towards the goal, flips by Steele and goes behind and away for another corner. Well, I think initially that was a missed kick by Anthony, but the missed kick sort of put Steele off because he was diving to his left and it meant that he went a little bit early 
and then he had to sort of almost readjust mid-flight as a result of that he spooned the ball round the post it's another corner I'll tell you what that was absolutely brilliantly worked by United it was driven across low uh, towards the edge of the box Fred's let it go straight through his legs he knew what was coming behind him and Anthony's effort nearly guided in by uh, Casemiro or Martial short back from the uh, corner kick is in an offside position it's a little bit sloppy it's going to be a free kick over on the far side 59% possession for Brighton so far in the game three shots to United six two shots uh, on target for Brighton two shots on target for Manchester United one corner to Manchester United's five now and it's been uh, a busy old start to the game here live on Talk Sport with uh, now sports and don't forget with now sports you can watch and stream all the sky sports action for just 11.99 no contract including tonight's game search now sports here's rashford on the edge of the area playing the ball up to martial gets the return it's cleared away by webster and out towards the far side and then ciso grabs hold of it and eventually goes out of play pascal gross is here not playing tonight because of a knock but he He's a regular scorer against Manchester United. Six goals in ten Premier League games. He was on the score sheet when Manchester United were beaten here. And Stuart and I were sitting in these exact seats at the end of last season and they won 4-0. Oh, an unbelievable game. Yeah, it certainly was. I, I think from a spectacle, this one's far better. We might not have had the goals at the moment, but the, the tactical intrigue in this game is just brilliant. Caicedo taking the ball over the halfway line from the right fullback position for Brighton he helps it on to Buonanotte who moves up towards the edge of the area tries to squeeze it between a tight gap it's headed away by Gallo there was no suggestion of handball it goes back out to the near side and then it's into Fernandez, who loses possession to Caicedo brings him down gives away a free kick in a dangerous area one of those where he took one for the team there Fernandez, after initially getting caught on the ball yeah it certainly looked as they did and once again Caicedo getting forward offering himself there's an extra option up front on this right hand side half time in the game at Huddersfield big night for Huddersfield tonight or could be Alan Biggs yeah Huddersfield nil Sheffield United nil Huddersfield living very dangerously indeed just need a point for survival they've survived a couple of really big chances wasted by Daniel Jebison on both occasions and Sheffield United far far on top chasing shadows for Neil Warnock's team but he'll be delighted with this Huddersfield nil Sheffield United nil yeah, they need one point to stay up. They play Reading at home on Monday, who are the team that they're vying to stay in the championship with. And goal difference could be a massive swing. And uh, Adrian Durham will be round the grounds on Monday to bring you the final day of the championship across TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Free kick then for Brighton, wide on the right-hand side. Buonanotte takes it, the teenager, towards the far post. Webster heads it towards the left wing position because it went a little bit too far. Comes back in by Billy Gilmore towards the far side and it goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our right-hand side side this is talk sport and we played 32 minutes Billy Gilmore who uh, was signed by Graham Potter and the team here from Chelsea hasn't been a regular in the team he's played a handful of games now but he struggled to get into this team like he struggled to get into Lewis Dunk's quiz team just looking at Webster there they're talking about earlier Dunk stepping in look Webster Webster. stepped all the way in with Fernandes Dunk stepped all the way in as well leaving no central defenders whatsoever in in their lineup. and Manchester United are breaking down the right side Anthony towards the edge of the area pokes it into Martial edge of the box it floats to the six yard area Rashford trying to keep it alive he's going to you know he gets to the perimeter of the box on the wide left position turns it round the corner and it's picked up by Fred Fred fighting for it got a little knock went down Referee looked at it, oh, and then Rashford tried to win the ball on the edge of the area once again. Even the match contest this, it's still nil-nil. I'm not sure how. Here's Esther Pinyan, the left back. He was the third furthest player forward on the break. In it goes to Enciso, wide to Buonanotte. Then on the edge of the area, Welbeck is calling for it. He turns, plays it out wide towards the left. Matoma back to Welbeck edge of the area encouraged to shoot tackled by Casemiro the ball's turned over and now Manchester United are going to go at the other end on the attack they play it forward up to Martial he couldn't get it under control and it goes all the way to Jason Still and if you'd like to just for a second just have a breather I'll tell you what this I've watched a lot of football over time as we both have Sam but but this 
I'm finding this so good. This almost relights your love for the game and just tells you which way the game's going nowadays. Brilliant. Down towards Sue McAllister for Brighton to come forward. Right footed shot towards the far corner. Well, David De Gea can only stand and watch it because it was arcing towards that far post. It didn't quite come back in, but David De Gea didn't know what day it was there. That ball went arcing towards that top corner, and if it had just come in a little bit, there was no stopping it. Yeah, he's put no curl on it at all. I, I think he was expecting to. He's given the eyes that he was going to pass it out wide, and then he's just got his toe on it instead of his instep to put some curl on the ball. If he would have got it on target, like you said, it's in the back of the net. That's a great shot from behind the goal from the camera where you could see David De Gea just looking over his shoulder as the ball goes into the crowd behind. And he was mightily relieved, I think. Luke Shaw travels up to halfway. Nil-nil the score. We've played 34 and a half breathless minutes on TalkSport. A gripping, absorbing encounter live from the South Coast and the Amex Stadium. Anthony does brilliantly to win his header and then chase it down towards the far corner. Picks it up, comes back in field. Juan Bataka protects it well. Should he have got a foul there after Matoma seemed to knock him to the floor? Well, they've got the ball at their feet, so there's no reason to stop the game. United have still got the ball. Why stop the game, I'd say? Half-time in the Championship. Huddersfield needing a point nil. Sheffield United nil. Massive game that is in the Championship. Big game for Neil Warnock. He really has done a fantastic job to claw them away from the relegation zone. Lindelof dicing with death goes in from behind on Matoma. Luckily, he didn't catch the player. And uh, we play on with Brighton in possession away to our left-hand side. The game being played at an incredible speed. And, I mean, we've been to some terrific games, even this week. Uh, I mean, the, the game on Sunday between Liverpool and Tottenham was bonkers. The game on Monday night, Leicester... And Everton was absolutely outstandingly good. Tuesday night, Arsenal against Chelsea. Well, Arsenal were good and Chelsea were outstandingly bad. Wednesday night, we had Manchester uh, Manchester City making sure that, that uh, their title ambitions were reaffirmed when they beat West Ham, who played very well in the game for the first 45 minutes. And we brought you Liverpool beating Fulham over on TalkSport 2. Tonight, we're getting terrific entertainment. This is this goes beyond that. I think the tactical approach, the the intricacies, the movement of what, the what ball. What is it about the tactical approach that you like so much? It, it's just when you see little things like Dunk goes all the way from a central centre half position, goes all the way in, literally 30 yards beyond his midfield to go and press somebody, and then alongside him Webster does the same so leaves no centre half there whatsoever when United are looking to play out from the back and you think they're so well organised Welbeck sends the ball to in CISO who shoots towards the far corner but he steers it wide the ball was played up to Welbeck a little tuck even though he was fouled into in CISO who ran down the right channel and steered the ball towards the far corner across the goalkeeper but it was three yards wide of the goal he didn't catch it like he catched he caught that one at Stamford Bridge a couple of weeks ago and it goes behind and away for a goal kick. Is that why Roberto De Zerbi, for example, is being talked about as someone who's going to move on from here to, a, to another job, a perceived bigger club, because of those tactical innovations that you've pointed out? I, I think so. As I say, th th there's only one reason why centre-halves would, would come out of their central defensive slots, because they've been well coached and they know exactly what to do. And once they've stepped out, the pair of them have stepped beyond the midfield. The midfield have just rotated yeah. and, and become central defenders. But so good. Someone who's won the World Cup, who, who's a playmaker at a heart, coming back into that sort of position to, to ensure that those Manchester United runners don't get free. Matoma down the left-hand side, pulls the ball through the 18-yard box. Caicedo gives it to uh, Bonanotte, and then it all goes all the way back to Webster once again. Webster strolls forward. Manchester United back in shape. They had a grip of the game in the early stages. Manchester United might be losing that grip now. Here's uh, Caicedo bending the ball into the box right-footed. Away by Martial. Fernandez thinks he was fouled from behind. The referee says play on. He's not having anything tonight, the referee. Ball launched high up by Dallow towards Rashford, who's one-on-one -on -one with Dunk. Dunk comes across, heads it away, takes it into the right full-back position, and then it goes out and away for a throw-in. So you've got a big centre off coming across dealing with the ball and it's not just good enough to win the ball back and, and, and stop the attack from Rashford he's looking to play out in his own corner flag almost he couldn't do it on that occasion but the ability to want to do that is just amazing Casemiro 
Back to uh, Shaw. Shaw sending it down the left into Fred. Then back to Martial inside the area. He shoots at the goalkeeper who makes a big save. It was straight down his throat, though. Straight at him from Martial. It's another big chance for Manchester United. And Anthony Martial has fluffed his lines. Played in down the left channel. Fred now tussling with Welbeck on this near side. That's a late challenge from Welbeck. It's getting a little bit spicy. Fred goes in. He kicks out. The referee's got a bit of calming down to do here. Bonanotte goes down onto the floor. It was just getting a little bit out of control there. And we might get our first card of the game. The free kick has been given to Manchester United. Andre Mariner has explained to Roberto De Zerbi why he's made that decision. Danny Welbeck is being penalised. Tell you what, well done Andre Mariner. No, no big repercussions on it. He's looked at it. He, he's decided that the first foul was committed by an Albion player and he's pulled it back for that and given the foul. I mean, it could have been, you know, much more historical than that and more excitable, but Andre Mariner just quashed all of that. Hyster historical or hysterical? I don't know. It's one of the two. <laughs> I really do. It could have been both. You never know. I'm just excited to be here, my friend. You know what I mean? What a big chance that was for Anthony Martial in the box. It certainly was brilliant. Well, United have shown that they can cut Brighton open with their counter-attack. I think United are the best counter-attack team in the league. Last year it was Liverpool, it's United now. And tonight they're, they're demonstrating they can counter-attack and cut Brighton open. What, what we didn't see it come off at Wembley, there were a few glimpses of Manchester United getting away in transition, but not enough of it. They scored more goals from fast breaks than anyone else this season. They loved that. That's playing into their hands. How are they... How are they doing that more tonight than they did at Wembley? Well, I think there's a scenario where, where Brighton have overcommitted a little bit and we've got a situation there where Webster's way sort of 20 yards in front of Dunk, which is asking them to defend right across the width of the pitch with three-on-three on, three on occasion. They're committing players forward. What does that do? It leaves spaces behind on the turnover. It is more of a dangerous philosophy for Manchester United tonight, though, isn't it? Because they are doing a little bit more in terms of pressing in the other half of the field. Here's Anthony down the left-hand side into wan inside the box, tries to steer it goalwards, comes off the defender and goes behind and away for a corner. Yeah, both teams have done their homework on each other. So both teams know that they want to play out from the back, we want to play out. So there is a, an element of we're going to nullify that and we think we've got good opportunities. Both teams get big numbers forward when they can. The other side of that is on breakdown and on transition, the pace that United have got on the counter-attack and the ability that Brighton have got as well when the ball's out at Mat Matomo's feet is quite uh, outstanding. Rashford's got a problem on this near touchline. He's getting some attention. There's a, currently a break in play, so I'll tell you it's Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Remarkably. And for the latest odds, head to Labrooks, where right now you can get Brighton to win at 29 to 20, Manchester United 19 to 10. The draw is 2 to 1. That's all thanks to Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. This is Talk Sport. And uh, it's been a terrific first 45 minutes. A wonderful week of football. 25 days of commentaries consecutively. This is day 25. 11 days after these two last met at Wembley. It's a very different game. Manchester United committing more to the press, sometimes getting a little bit sucked in, but they haven't had too much damage over the top this time around. And every time Brighton think they're getting a grip on the game, Manchester United hit back, and they've had the best chances in this first 45 to open the scoring. Ball in towards the near post, away by Welbeck. The delivery was poor from Fernandez, and it's out on the far side and away for a throw-in. He hit it with venom, but there was no loft on it at all, was there? No, no, as I say, he's put good pace on it. I, I wonder, we've not got a good angle here, I wonder whether he's seen a gap sort of, you know, just inside the six-yard yeah. box to whip, whip it inside that defender. We're basically sitting behind the dugouts here at uh, the Amex Stadium, the 31,800 all-seater stadium. Great venue for football. Here is uh, Bonanotte trying to escape for Brighton. Well won back by a combination of Fred, then Dello, then Fernandez, then Rashford is on the way because Martial sent him through and he's running between Caicedo and Estepinian who does brilliantly to get back and nab the ball for Brighton. Excellent work. Up it goes to McAllister who overruns it slightly. Casemiro late, very late. Yellow card swiping the feet away from McAllister. Brazilian on Argentinian. 
And uh, there was no love lost there, was there? That was a full, meaty challenge from Casemiro, who took everything away from McAllister. He swiped his legs from behind him. And it's a free kick just in front of the centre circle. Yeah, just looking at the replay on that. And uh, McAllister knew it was coming, make no mistake about that. He, he's not been caught unawares. He's had a little look and saw saw the challenge coming in. And uh, I don't think there was any, ever any doubt he was going to get hurt by it. Uh, one minute to go before the uh, conclusion of the first half. A little tap by Estepinian. A floated ball by McAllister is hefty. Bonanate keeps it in. Martial tries to bring it clear. Webster does well. Bonanate's got it again. Left footed towards the far corner. He's the outside of the post. Or very close to doing so. And David De Gea wasn't too sure where it was going. The free kick was a cute one. It came to McAllister. It was deep. Kept it alive, Bonanate, really, to be honest with you. The second ball won well by Webster. Back into Bonanate, who got away from Martial. Then left footed. Oh, it's so close to dipping in at the far post. And it was just narrowly wide in the end. Yeah, he's put reasonable curl on it, but we've had probably about three or four efforts at goal that players have, normally the, the proviso is aim for the post with curl and you know you're going to be inside the post. They've set it out too wide. Well, Brighton won their last game 6-0 against Wolves. They were 4-0 up at half-time. It was their biggest Premier League win and the first time they've ever scored six in a top division. We could have had six goals in the opening half 45 minutes here and we haven't I mean I've got Anthony Mitoma Fernandez, Anthony Rashford all written down Martial's had a good chance as well and it's been a lively first 45 minutes but the best of those chances have gone the way of the away team four minutes of added time at the end of the first 45 some brilliant football has been on show here at the Amex Stadium there has been a real pace and tempo to the game and uh, Certainly incredibly lively at the Amex Stadium this evening. Remember, on Saturday, no midday kickoffs because of the coronation. So we bring you three o'clock kickoff uh, on Talk Sport from Tottenham against Crystal Palace. And Sunday night, it's West Ham United against Manchester United. And that game kicks off at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, Monday, uh, Sunday night. Live on TalkSport, Monday night, Nottingham Forest against Southampton. There are our next three big Premier League games. The final day of the Championship is on TalkSport on Monday from 3 o'clock. They all kick off at 3 o'clock. We'll be on air well before that with Adrian. And it is one hell of a last couple of weeks of the season with European action to come next week as well. Manchester City going to Madrid. Fred shanks the ball out from the midfield position inside his own half towards this near side. It goes out for a throw-in. Gilmore picks it up, plays it into the centre circle. Now Lewis Dunk strides forward. Moves into the Manchester United half, gives it straight to uh, Casemiro. Well, it's not a great ball by Martial again. Comes back in CISO, goes through Casemiro, right put it, digs it out, but it's way over the top. Got past Casemiro pretty easily though, didn't he? Nifty feet to take it down the left channel. Just jinked past him rather easily. Went up to uh, Casemiro and then went the other way. Worked it back onto his right foot and then... Well, he didn't catch it at all right and he sort of ballooned it into the stand away to our right, the Manchester United fans. No, whilst I, I admit there's a, a lot of movement on the balls, you've at least got to do some work with your feet to make it go in the right direction. And just as he was having a, a wiggle on the edge of the box and looking to shoot, I looked at Rashford's position and Rashford was just pulling away into space, waiting for the counter-attack. That's why he's so effective for United and they miss him so much when he's not available. Do you think he's better suited to that left flank cutting in than he is as a central striker? Yeah, without a doubt. It, I, I think he can run across the line better there. I think he sees play better there. Um, yeah, and he can cut in on that right foot. Here is Bonanotte on the far side, the right, cutting in perpendicular to the edge of the penalty area. It's blocked by Dallow, free kick given. And McAllister wants to start it quickly, and he's been allowed to. Out to the wide right, and CISO into the penalty area. Plays it against Rashford, goes out into corner. Well, and CISO should have put that in a bit earlier. Clever play there. Good early. It's good to see a quick free kick taken. Everything's normally so contrived this day and age. Quick free kick. He was in behind. And when he had the opportunity to slide it in behind the back line, I think he should have took it. Here is the corner on the near side to be taken by Bonanotte. Gilmore goes short. Caicedo's on the right angle of the penalty area on the near side. There's Webster and Dunk up from the back here. And Esther Pinion lurking five yards outside the area the corner kick comes in it is so high towards the back post it goes beyond 
Lewis Duncan out towards the far corner and it's wrestled back by uh, Luke Shaw and sent down the right side and Manchester United looking to try and get a counter-attack away but McAllister rescues it sent back towards Bonanotte right side edge of the area Welbeck in the box now being chased by Lindelof it's back to uh, Bonanotte who's got uh, Fernandez for company it's bumped behind by Lindelof as the cross came in low and hard and out for yet another corner to Brighton who again have just turned up the pressure on Manchester United at the end of the first 45 minutes a breathless absorbing contest between these two teams in which I think the referees he stopped the play stopped the uh, corner from being taken too quickly and wants it taken again after Enciso and Gilmore got things underway a little bit too sharpish and uh, they'll re-spot it and start again Gilmore a couple of yards in front of Buonanotte the teenager only 18 years of age who's taken most of the set pieces so far in this game for Roberto De Zerbi's team left footed much better this time towards Dunk good header away by Lindelof who played well at uh, Aston Villa on Sunday and the half time whistle goes and what a very good first half of football that has been Manchester United actually have failed to beat City away Arsenal away Newcastle away Tottenham away Liverpool away Villa away Brentford away but they've certainly turned up in this encounter and made a real match of it against Brighton it's been terrific the first 45 minutes have been gripping but it's still nil-nil it is goalless at half time and Stuart Pearce said in commentary it's been brilliant one of the best games he's seen this season and I make you right as well even though it's nil-nil from the very first moment 90 seconds in Man United have split Brighton apart. Anthony hits it wide, should score. And then we've had chances right up to half-time for both sides. It's been end-to-end, hasn't it? It's been brilliant. It's been brilliant. The only the only criticism you could possibly have when shooting opportunities have been available, they've not hit the target varying players. But the game itself, it's been the best nil-nil I've ever seen, I think. The tactical approach between both teams has been fantastic. The counter-attack threat from United has been sensational. And Brighton, for me, well, they're just wowing me when I watch them. I've not covered them a great deal this year. When I watch them now, this is probably the strongest Brighton team that I've seen over recent years. And recent years, they've been very good. You've been talking about the two centre-halves, Duncan Webster. There was a moment on, on around 36 minutes, Lewis Dunk... They were passing it between themselves, just waiting, seeing what happened. There was no nothing obvious from Man United saying, well, we're letting you in here. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Dunk fired, fizzed in a pass through to NC. So he laid it off first time to Welbeck. Welbeck laid it back to him in a 1-2 first time as well. Welbeck got clattered, knew he was going to get clattered as well, very brave. And Cizo was through, fired a shot, went just wide. But that's, the, I mean, from, from nothing, they went to naught, from naught to 100 in, in no time at all because the centre-halves can pass the ball. Yeah, and as I say, Webster and Dunk, very, very comfortable. And almost, for me, as a manager, it's almost unacceptable some of the some of the options they take and where they take the ball. They're, they're taking it in areas which is ridiculous. But it depends what you like as a manager. If you say, look, there's a greater good to it, we're drawing the opposition onto us to play balls like that through the thirds. That's why you do it. And listen, certainly... De Zerbi has coached his team fantastically well. They're being picked open at times by United, but United can do that to anybody. The two English centre-halves, though, Webster and Dunk. Dunk's got one cap, Webster nothing as yet, and England want to pass the ball around. Should they be considered, the pair of them? Well, there's no reason why not. You've got to be comfortable in possession this day and age. You know, if you're critical, you might turn around and say, well, hang on a minute, United have been through the heart of your back line on several occasions your centre of it's your job now you'd have to look at the game really closely to decode have they stepped out at the right time or have they not so that that's a potential problem but listen I certainly think in Dunk's case his form has been that good the confidence I work with, with Lewis at under 21 level and for me I'm sat here thinking I've worked with Steely at one end of the pitch Danny Welbeck the other Dunk at the other and I'm thinking to myself I'm never, I've never seen you playing with this real confidence and arrogance that you're playing for Brighton with at the moment. And I'm thinking that's all down to filling young players with confidence, self-esteem and great coaching as well by, by obviously their club manager. Uh, one other little thing I've been fascinated. I'd have paid money to see the battle between Matoma and Wambasaka on Brighton's left, Man United's right. It's been brilliant. Let's just uh, ignore Matoma's shocking dive um, in the middle of the half. But... That is a proper, you know, a, a winger who wants to get forward. You don't know if he's going to go wide or cut in. 
And wan a proper one-on-one defender. It's a brilliant battle, that. It, it, it certainly is. Matomo is certainly... You get him running at you, and he cuts it, he chops, he chops. And I know as a fullback, that's a real, real problem to deal with. wan body language is a little bit reserved is the word I'd probably use best I, I can tell by looking at a fullback what goes through their mind in regard to their body language when they engage the winger so if they're full of confidence they're on the front foot putting pressure on the winger when you think hang on this fella's got me on toast a little bit I've got to be a bit respectful and wan betraying that but he's standing his ground and making a fight of it at the moment I would say if it was a boxing game, I would say Matoma's ahead on points, but he's not put the ball in the back of the net yet. That's true. Nobody has. And, and very quickly, is that bad finishing or good goalkeeping? Um, I would say more bad finishing. Just air on more bad finishing. Too many players have been in good positions and Anthony's one when he's gone through the middle of the goal, missed the target completely. Too many of them. Matomo, when he's half knocked the goalkeeper out, he's got to do better there, to be quite honest with you. Goalkeepers have played their part, but the finishing has been a little lacklustre. Brighton nil, Man United nil at half-time. Half-time in the Rugby League, Stu. You'll be interested in whoa, this. Whoa, go on, go on. Uh, Hull FC 14, Wigan 6. Long may that continue tonight because if they put up a, a decent score against them, Warrington go back top again on goal difference. We'll try and help you out. Uh, it will be amazing if they get back-to-back wins, Hull FC. But that's live on TalkSport 2 right now. To get TalkSport 2, just download the TalkSport app for free and swipe between the two stations. Uh, Napoli can win the title today, or tonight rather. They need a point at Udinese. They're 1-0 down just going into the second half. And Huddersfield need a point to stay up. Uh, six minutes into the second half there it's Huddersfield nil Sheffield United nil we'll keep you updated with that but what a first half here at the Amex we've had everything but goals Brighton nil Man United nil live on TalkSport kick off on TalkSport with Ladbrokes are you in? let's go play at ladbrokes.com 18 plus begambleaware.org the new season is here and the Times on Saturday has all the big interviews insightful analysis and stats you need to set you up for a perfect weekend of Premier League action Subscribe today at thetimes.co.uk slash football for provocative and compelling opinions from the best sports writers in the business, including James Gibrandt, Owen Slott, and the voice of football, Henry Winter. Lovely bit of football! Try it free for one month at thetimes.co.uk slash football. Auto renews at £26 a month unless cancelled. T's and C's apply. Rodri to De Bruyne, flicked on to Walker, goal! No one saw that coming! Or as we say in Japan, no one tsume o kakusu. The smart hawk hides its talents. For taste beyond the expected, Asahi Super Dry, official beer partners of Manchester City. Enjoy responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Sipping a morning coffee out on the terrace. Good morning, Mr. Squirrel. Morning. The kids building a treehouse in the garden. I'm living my perfect childhood. But come on. This isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. We've got it at Selco. Selco, it's where the train goes. At Selco Builders Warehouse, we've got real deals on a wide range of building products. In May, we've got 110 millimeter single socket, three meter underground pipe for only £12.99 X that. And with free delivery, that's a real deal. Find more real deals online at selcobw.com. We've got it at Selco. Go, Selco, it's where the train goes. That charged at 20%. Free delivery within local delivery areas. Hello, my friend. Life comes at you fast, so make time for you time with Just Eat. For early times, lunch times, late times, strange times. The perfect times for the McDonald's sausage and egg McMuffin, Five Guys cheeseburger and strawberry shake, Domino's pepperoni passion, plus more from Costa Coffee, Cream's Cafe and Pizza Express. So order now, later, in a bit, whenever. We got it. Did somebody say Just Eat? Product subject to availability in restaurant and serving times. Participating stores only. See justeat.co.uk for details. And he's barreled it straight through the midfield into the Village Hotel Pub and Grill Fan Zone, the home of big screen live football. A long volley over the stadium seats by the giant screens into the left-hand corner of the bar. Past a winning lineup of ice-cold beers and a magnificent menu of mouth-watering footy food. Result! Enjoy the perfect big match experience with food, drink and live football at a Village Hotel Pub and Grill Fan Zone at 33 UK locations. Find your nearest venue and win monthly prizes, including match tickets at villagehotels.com slash fanzone. Get in! Conditions apply. 18 plus always doing responsibly. 
This football season, get a hand from Betfair's popular bet builder and easily add our fan favourite football selections to your bet slip in just one tap. Spend less time finger faffing and place your bet the easy way. Now that's handy because we're Betfair. Exclusive to Betfair Sportsbook. Terms and conditions apply. Please see frequently asked questions on support.betfair.com. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Game day exclusive on TalkSport with Car Finance 24-7. Sort your finance first so you can choose a car with confidence. Search Car Finance 24-7 today. Representative APR 19.9%. Car Finance 24-7 is a credit broker, not a lender. TalkSport on DAB on 1053 and 1089 medium wave. On your mobile, online, on the app and all one smart speaker. <laughs> I say your coronation and relegation station. Talk Sport. City are excited by the possibility of a coronation by the sea. Manchester United are worrying about being locked out of the crown jewels should they suffer a defeat here. Anthony with the first shot on goal, steers it wide of the left hand upright. It's a big let off for Brighton that. Quick, sharp start from Manchester United. The state by Lindelof, he's giving it straight to the turn, edge of the air, right foot his shot. Oh, he smacked it straight into the face of David De Gea, whose head has just made probably one of the saves of the season. This is the best 15 minutes of a start of a game I've ever seen this season. Towards Sue McAllister for Brighton to come forward. Right footed shot towards the far corner. Well, David De Gea can only stand and watch it. Juanonote's well, got it again. Left footed towards the far corner, he's the outside of the post. First 45 minutes have been gripping, but it's still nil-nil. Second half to come live and exclusive on Talk Sport. 25 days of consecutive live football commentaries on the Talk Sport network. And this is day 25 of those 25. It is a brilliant first half, but no goals. Brighton nil, Man United nil. So let's get the half time odds with Ladbrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Ladbrooks. Are you in? Let's go. Play at ladbrooks.com. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Nicola McGeady from Ladbrokes. What a brilliant half of football. All that was lacking was anybody hitting the back of the net. So what's going to happen in the second half? Yeah, I'm so surprised we haven't had goals yet. It's been brilliant. Both teams really going for it. You would expect there's going to be plenty of opportunities in the second half. Very little between them in the betting. Brighton just edging it as favourites at 6-4. to four. United's odds have really come in. They're 2-1 to one with the draw at 15-8. to eight. Rashford's looking dangerous. He's 11 to 2 to score first. Welbeck is 6 to 1. And it's 23 to 20 that both teams score. And I like the look of those odds. It's 11 to 2. The score remains the same. I don't think that's going to happen. 5 to 1 says it's 1 0. Brighton, 6 to 1 says it's 1 1 0 United. But we shall see. You know, uh, you know, Brighton have been excellent. United have been so dangerous. Well, this should be a very interesting second half. Nicola, thank you very much. That was the latest odds with Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Odds update on Talk Sport with Ladbrokes. Are you in? Let's go. Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Well, Huddersfield need a point to stay up and send Reading down, and there has been a goal at the John Smiths, but which way, Alan Biggs? Huddersfield might get three points, Adrian. Huddersfield won. Sheffield United nil. A huge goal and a brilliant goal as well. Complete change around in this second half. Danny Ward's goal rewarding Huddersfield's change of approach. Much less tentative, much more aggressive. They were so passive in the opening half. Were fortunate to be goalless at the break. But Ward shaping an opportunity for himself with great control. Some 25 yards from goal and then wrapped his left foot around a shot that went across Wes Fodderingham in the Sheffield United goal and crisply into the corner of the net. As I say, it's complete turnaround this half. Huddersfield have forced three early corners. They'd also forced a save by Fodderingham from Josh Caroma from an angle, having survived two really bad misses by Daniel Jebison in the opening half when there was really only one team in it. Paul Heckingbottom, the uh, Blades manager, has brought on uh, a new strike force uh, this half. Ollie McBurney's come on for Jebison. Billy Sharp is on for Iliman Anjai. But they simply haven't seen the ball at all since the break. 62 minutes. Huddersfield need a point to stay up. They might get all three. Huddersfield one, Sheffield United nil. How good is Neil Warnock? Just incredible. 
They need a point. They're going to get three. They're one nil up, and that means survival for Huddersfield as the EFL season draws to a close with the only national radio station that's brought you commentaries from the EFL. That's how much we care about it this season. So many good games, so many good divisions as well. Sunday, the final day in the regular League One season. If Derby win at Sheffield Wednesday, they take the final playoff place. If Derby slip up the posh can step in I'm not confident uh, we've got Sheffield Wednesday Derby live on TalkSport 2 reporters at the other key games uh, as well and Sheffield Wednesday Derby could actually be a playoff semi-final as well uh, Monday lunchtime League 2 comes to a close we'll have commentary of Tramier against Northampton who can secure the third automatic spots any slip-ups and Stockport could be in there playoff places up for grabs as well uh, Monday afternoon it's championship final day five teams going for two playoff places I'll be hosting your show on TalkSport Monday afternoon Live from the den, Millwall against Blackburn, and they are both two of the five teams that can get a playoff place. Final days in Championship League One, League Two, covered properly on Talk Sport. I mentioned before that Napoli need a point to win the Serie A title in Italy. They've equalised at Udinese. Victor Osimhen, their top scorer, who's been an absolute superstar this season, has got the leveller as it stands. Napoli are going to win their first title since Maradona won it with them in 1990. Back here at the Amex in Sussex. Night has fallen up above and the second half is on its way. It's had everything but goals. It's been brilliant live on Talk Sport, but it is Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. So let's hope for goals in the second half with the former England captain Stuart Pearce and Talk Sport's chief football commentator Sam Matface. Well, Brighton are looking to complete the double over Manchester United for the first time. There was nothing between them at Wembley a couple of weeks ago. And there's nothing between them here, but it's been a very different encounter to the one we saw 11 days ago under the arch in the FA Cup semi-final. That time, Manchester United prevailed on penalties. Who's going to prevail tonight, Stuart Pearce? Well, on what I've seen, I think United might just pip them. It in regard to that turnover of possession they'd probably look more of a threat slightly on the counter attack and I think I would just edge on United but certainly Brighton have been absolutely fantastic as well Karen Matoma picks the ball up for Brighton and darts down the near side drifts it into the box it's half cleared and then it's picked up by Casemiro and worked out towards Fernandez, who gets beyond Caicedo really committed there and missed the ball and now there's space in the right fullback position and it's being attacked by Marcus Rashford now into the left wing area goes into the box goes to ground under pressure from Dunk goes down and looks at the referee who just says goal kick no thank you very much so Brighton have made no changes Steele is their goalkeeper Caicedo, Webster, Dunk and Estepinha and Bonanote McAllister and uh, Gilmore in midfield with Matoma on the left hand side and Ciso behind Welbeck in attack which having a look at those replays there wasn't much in that was there that is an understatement and sooner sooner that the officials and football get rid of this and start looking at things like that in, well you've seen it straight away he should have got booked straight away end of you're saying he threw himself to the floor of course he did ball is out on the right hand side we'll go for the United lineup in just a second the blue shirts white uh, shorts the blue and white striped shirts white shorts of Brighton attacking the goal away to our left with Bonanotte who sends the ball high into the stand away to our left hand side the north stand of the Amex Stadium and there are a couple of tiers on each of the side three tiers on this side two on the far side and one tier at either end the Manchester United fans locked in at the away end away to our right hand side 3,000 of them have made the very long journey down to Brighton uh, I was on the train with a lot of them earlier on today coming down from Manchester as we snaked down the country jumped on tubes to get across London and onto the Gatwick Express to fire into Brighton train station and uh, everyone in good spirits as uh, they look to watch this pivotal match and certainly it's been well worth attending we played just two minutes of the second half and it's nil-nil. Manchester United with the Gea in goal, Wan-Bissaka, Lindelof, Shaw and Dallow. Casemiro's been booked at the heart of the midfield. Then it's Anthony Fernandez, Fred and Rashford. All of them pushing up, trying to win the ball high inside Brighton territory. And Martial leading the line. He's been disappointing for me again, Anthony Martial, over the course of the game. He never really seems to be able to produce the performance that Manchester United want to unlock from him. 
Yeah, it might, I don't know. Sometimes you judge from the outside and you think there's just a lack of personality in his football, you know. You'd like to see a little bit more... I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here, Sam. You know, just give us a bit more personality in your body language, if you like. It's probably one of the only uh, times when we're allowed to say oomph. He needs a bit more oomph, doesn't he, about him? Yeah, it certainly seems that way. And I've just noticed, they just seems to have changed. I don't know whether it's a, a permanent thing or whether it's just in the action. They are Rashford's down the middle now, Marcial on the whip. Uh, Caicedo down into the right wing position, gets the ball back, gives it to Bonanotte, and then it's collected by Caicedo again on the far side. The ball is with... Uh, Billy Gilmore, Billy Gilmore plays it centrally, it's picked up by McAllister who tries to scythe through the Manchester United midfield and defence with one straight ball which has come out eventually and then pops up into the arms of uh, the goalkeeper David De Gea away to our left-hand side. Anthony Martial not worked really when he's been included recently, his last goal was when he scored against Everton as a substitute, seven goals this campaign, a lot of them have been as a sub off the bench, he was on loan at Sevilla for the back end of last season. I think they'll probably try to move him on in the summer, depending on where they go with a transfer acquisition. Here is Estepinian delivering across into the penalty area. It's headed away by, da, uh, by uh, Luke Shaw, who got back in front of Danny Welbeck. A good header by Luke Shaw as well. Dallow brings it wide towards the right-hand side. Dunk with an excellent reading. Nudge, nudges the ball out into the stand that we're in on this near side and away for a throw and it remains nil-nil absolutely magnificent cross there from the left back just whipped it in he sort of the ball was on the outside of me he thought he's not really got the angle to get anything on this just put it in a wonderful area on the edge of the six yard box well when Brighton beat Manchester United 2-1 at Old Trafford earlier in the season the scoreline did flatter the home team we were here almost a year ago to the day when Brighton ripped United to shreds 4-0 what performance that was and Brighton have played with such a progressive, short, sharp passing style, playing through the thirds of the pitch. Only Manchester City average a higher number of short passes over the course of the season. Only Manchester City average more possession of the football than Brighton. And they've had a really good start to this second half here. Down the right they come with Caicedo, who seems to be getting up to join the attack a lot more in this second half. Plays it back towards the centre circle. Dunk strides forward. Moves into the middle point of the Manchester United half. Fernandez goes to engage with Webster. Webster plays it back to Dunk. And then Manchester United once again watches Webster and Dunk just dictate the pace of the game. Caicedo gets it back to Webster once more. Goalless after 50 minutes on talk sport. Pumped forward by Dunk. Trying to get in behind wan Saka, whose header away goes straight to Enciso. Enciso trying to build from here. He's tussling with Casemiro. He's got to be careful. Gets into the box. Gets it onto his right foot. Shoots. It hits wan Saka, And then comes out of the penalty area. Another chance. Great feat from Enciso. Enciso there. Just incredible. The ball was stuck to his foot. He's manipulating it brilliantly. He's got himself into the box. And he's shot just straight down the barrel of the defender. Casemiro's got to be very, very careful. Yellow card coming here from Adam Webster, who's shouting at uh, Fernandez, who he thinks dived. It's going to be a yellow card for Webster. And there was a foul on Anthony as well, which is going to go unpunished because the foul on Bruno Fernandez preceded it. It was a little bit late from Adam Webster, that. I don't think he'd have too much of a complaint about the yellow card and how much contact there was, but there was certainly some. No, it's a bookable offence. There is no doubt about that. Um, the other side of that is Sam and you don't want to keep on about it but if you're going to book someone for that book someone for diving as well let's have a little bit of consistency in regard to what we're trying to do and, and clean the game up a touch but let's not uh, detract from the fact this is a fantastic spectacle Casemiro does need to be a little bit careful because he had a little nibble at Enciso Enciso was very incisive on the edge of the penalty area the way he got his feet sorted out to take it away from him but he was having nibble after nibble after nibble and I was just thinking careful because that would have been three red cards since the World Cup if he got sent off I don't know how long he'd get for three red cards but I can imagine it's it's not a uh, it's not a short ban it certainly wouldn't be for that then to be fair that, that's a whole career's worth near enough for me 
amazing. All sorts of records being broken. Trevor Sinclair was telling us last night that Erling Haaland scored more goals this season than he did in his entire career. And you're about to tell us that Casemiro is likely to pick up more red cards this season than you did in your career. Well, he's only got to get two more and he's level with me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Bruno Fernandes is back up and he's playing and he's on the pitch and despite the fact that he got treatment he didn't have to go off and come back on again which is why the Brighton crowd aren't too happy it's nil-nil we're live at the Amex Stadium and there's a little twirl from Anthony which set Manchester United off and running again Anthony Martial only half committed to getting hold of that and it was cleared away by Brighton wan committed but not able to deal with Billy Gilmore went through his legs wan he's pushed Gilmore to the floor bullying the poor kid it's a free kick nothing more than that one red yellow card apiece Webster and Casemiro in the referee's notebook and Andre Mariner who's in charge tonight Manchester United supporters are uh, enjoying themselves on the south coast oh that's a short pass by De Gea played Casemiro into a bit of trouble manages to get it back to the Spaniard and it's cleared by a wan Bissaka into Dallow. He's given it away again. And Mitoma takes over. Moves down the left side of the penalty here. Into the box now. Has to square it. Doesn't. Goes for glory. There were five blue and white jerseys in proximity. Inside or on the edge of the penalty area. And he decided to go it alone. Yeah, I was speaking with Aid uh, at half-time. And I just said, I hope this game doesn't get decided on a mistake from, a, from someone giving it away. I hope someone earns a victory, if you like. And... To be honest, we are another occasion there where a cheap giveaway in their final third by a team has, uh, has ended up with a shot at goal. Well, look, Brighton have done very well over the course of the season keeping the team structure the same. They might have moved the formation around a little bit. They may have uh, changed the tactics for certain games, but they've kept the, the bulk of the team together. They made four changes tonight, but that's because they made a huge number of changes after a lethargic performance against Nottingham Forest the week before for that Wolves game, which they won 6 0. But I don't think only two teams have made fewer changes to their starting lineup all season, and they've certainly looked like a unit tonight. Here's Rashford over on the left hand side, moving towards the midpoint of the Brighton half. Exchanges passes with Fernandez, gets his shot away, but it's blocked by Caicedo. Up into the air it goes, and Wamba Saka tries to keep it alive, and Ciso trying to escape, and he does moves up to the halfway line so Manchester United were on the attack and now they've got to get back in, into a defensive shape Esther Pinyan halfway McAllister that's slowed because of interceptions from wan -Bissaka. lovely ball by McAllister out to the far side taken on by Carcedo into the area left footed it's repelled comes back to him on the edge of the box tries to turn again swirls into traffic Dallo gets it clear and uh, the ball is with Casemiro deep inside Manchester United territory he plays it to Fernandez, who's harassed by Caicedo he then has the ball thundered at him by Dallow it's out for a throw you were just looking at Anthony Martial's position yeah I'm just looking at Brighton broke then it was literally five on five on the edge of United's box and the ball gets turned over on the edge of United's box and you look up the pitch and it's almost 1v1 on the halfway line you think against players with real pace that is a dangerous game to play you always like to have that extra number but it's almost this uh, mentality from Brighton that says we're going to overload the opposition at any cost behind us we're not worried about it. you're going to have to just deal with it one on one is that because they know that their need is probably greater tonight a point for Manchester United is OK it, in fact it's, it's arguably a good result Whereas a point for Brighton, probably uh, it's going to make it tough if they're going to try and get into European competition. That might come into their thinking, potentially. We would only know that behind the scenes. But, you know, for me, I think it's just a tactical approach. They think, look, we're going to overload the opposition further up the pitch in an attempt to get a goal. Yeah, and they do it pretty often. They did it on Saturday against Wolverhampton Wanderers where they were terrific. The ball's broken again on halfway, given away by Fernandes and Mitoma is racing clear. He's now inside the penalty here, down the outside, tries to chip it to the far corner, but he used his right foot, he wasn't comfortable and he stabbed at it and lifted it towards the far side and it was patted away and down by David De Gea and cleared away, but another break and Manchester United haven't really got started at the beginning of this second half. 
I'm looking at wan body position with Matoma and he's almost just said to him, go on, you can go outside, but you're not coming inside and shown him when you're inside the box there, it's a dangerous game to play. There he is again, down the left side, Matoma into the area, right foot to the edge of the box and Welbeck meets it. And it was perfectly set up for Danny Welbeck, but he opened his body and his foot up to try and side foot it into the corner. And he got it all wrong and it flew off his boot and behind for a goal kick and Manchester United have another let off. Yeah, it's, it's probably a side of Danny's game that if he improved that goal scoring ratio, he, he certainly would be a more effective striker. He's opened his body up with almost the mentality of let's get it over with rather than I'm going to really score a goal here. Well, Manchester United had the better of the chances in the first half. Certainly Brighton have had the better of the chances in the second. We've nearly played an hour. Oh God, we've really nearly played an hour. It's been such an exhilarating football match. This game is akin to a, a training ground exercise where it's four versus four and it swings from one end to the other and you just keep 4v4 in one side of the pitch, 4v4 in the other and just it, it goes from end to end and that's how the game's got now. Now, Dallo's just gone wiring in on Buonadate and uh, that's going to be a uh, yellow card for Diogo Dallo. Manchester United hoping to get to the Champions League. The uh, Opta supercomputer gives them a 95.8% chance of returning to the Champions League and unlike Brighton, who have Euro rivals to face between now and the end of the season, this is the last fixture that United have got against a rival for a European place. And Everton, Arsenal, Newcastle, Southampton, City, Villa in what could be a thriller on the last day of the season are Brighton's final fixtures. Five of those remaining, remaining seven are against teams above them currently in the table. It's going to be a, some end of the season and we're following Brighton actually a couple of times. We're going to that Newcastle game in a couple of weeks and we'll be here on the 24th of May for that big game against Manchester City which is probably going to be pivotal for both. Juan Basaka all the way back to David De Gea being closed down by Matoma. Dallo, oh, he's got the ball stuck under his feet and he's being rushed by Buonanotte. Managed to get away with it on that occasion, but he didn't look comfortable at all. He looked frightened, didn't he? As that ball came back to him. And actually, if Buonanotte had got back to his feet after his little whack from uh, Diogo Dallo after their duel, when the ball was turned over just a moment ago, he actually would have been in a decent position. He really got in a pickle with his feet there in the box. Well, I'm not sure what Buena Notte is uh, fit on. He's got a little bit of a rogue hand somewhere. He's only little. 18 years, 129 days. He uh, might need a little bit of protection in the hurly-burly of the Premier League. Solly March, is that getting ready down in front of us to yeah. get his instructions to come on? The man who missed the key penalty in the FA Cup semi-final about to get on the pitch and try and influence proceedings. Maybe it's written in the stars that he comes off the bench and has a major impact on this game. We've played the hour and it is Talk Sport live at the Amex Stadium. It's Brighton and Hove Albion nil, Manchester United nil. And don't forget that you can watch all the Sky Sports action, stream it live with Now Sports for just 11 99 no contract. Search now sports including Brighton against Manchester United tonight and we've got live action for you Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday from all sorts of different competitions in Europe and from domestic action too as the end of the season really revs up Manchester United going into uh, within a point of Newcastle with a point here Brighton staying in eighth, but a point behind Aston Villa with two games in hand on them and Tottenham and Liverpool. Here's the substitution, Buonanotte coming off, and on comes Solly March. March had, had a good season so far, and uh, I was expecting him to be in the starting lineup this evening when they uh, come to the game. Yeah, eight goals since Christmas for Solly March. And he goes out over on the far side into that right wing position, that familiar position that we've seen him play over the course of the season. He really has had his best campaign, I think, in a uh, Brighton jersey, certainly at the top level. 
He's made a real impact, obviously had a huge impact in helping get them to this level. Wan-Bissaka immediately rushed by Matoma as the ball was played out to him by David De Gea. A flick on by Anthony Martial. Anthony goes chasing after it, gets to the edge of the area. And then Jason Steele hesitates, waits and then plays it out from the middle of the park. Everyone inside the stadium of a blue persuasion had a little heart-in-mouth moment, but not Jason Steele or Alexis McAllister, who casually just continued. Uh, here is Esther Pinyan on to Billy Gilmore, who stumbled stri uh, slightly and then got back to his feet, stumbled again. Fred takes it away. Gilmore brings him down. Free kick inside the centre circle. Casemiro is pointing out to Andre Mariner that in previous examples of that sort of cynicism, a yellow card has been brandished. Why is there not one here? Yeah, I think he's got a reasonable case there for a yellow card, potentially. Manchester United did come into the game in good form. They've won 24 of the last 34 games since the World Cup. That's why they have almost cemented their position in the top four. Here is Wan-Bissaka linking with Anthony down the right side. Back to Anthony once again, immediately surrounded by blue and white striped jerseys. And Wan-Bissaka has to juggle with it, flick it into the air, and then eventually... And there's a foul on Matoma. A free kick has been given to Brighton, away to our right-hand side. And Eric Ten Hag now not happy. He's having a few words uh, with Andre Mariner, who's just waved away his protests. Uh, what has uh, the uh, newly described LBG got to do to try and turn the tide of this game? Because Brighton is seemingly getting a grip of it. Well, they are with territory, there's no doubt about that, but the counter-attack threat has not come as often and maybe it's that energy to turn the ball over and get it forward quickly has just diminished slightly from United yeah if you weren't with us earlier before uh, kickoff, off um, Adrian Durham revealed on the game day podcast as Alex Crook has now affectionately named him Eric Ten Hag is called the little ball genius here is uh, Billy Gilmore over to the right hand side Webster into the centre, little turn by Alexis McAllister, he's got away from Casemiro, he's brought him down, oh dear, play on says the referee, right footed shot over the top of the crossbar, and is there going to be a problem here for Casemiro? Well, the Brighton fans think there should be. It was a foul, there's no doubt about it, referee played the advantage to allow them to continue, the Brighton players are surrounding the referee and asking for a yellow card here, it was played into the midfield position, McAllister did well to hold him off initially, and then he brought him down from behind, the wrong side. Stuart, what's your verdict? Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and turn around and say, you play the advantage. What is the advantage? When I used to, whenever any of our players got fouled on the edge of the box, I said, the advantage for us is stop playing, give me a free kick. The advantage there would have been sending Casemiro off, and personally, he should have got booked for that. Well, I said it in the first half, he's got to be very careful. <laughs> he's got no wiggle room now. Corner comes in towards the near post, headed away by Martial. Thundered clear by Fred, and it's up towards halfway, but there's no out ball for Manchester United. It comes back via Moises Caicedo towards Solly March on the right-hand side. He looks to combine with Enciso. Manchester United bring it clear. <laughs> Fred has it far side. Travels up towards the halfway line. Bounces into Caicedo. It goes away for a throw in to Brighton. Now you get the feeling that he's going to have to do something, uh, Eric Ten Hag, because it's one way traffic at the moment. And that's yep. one way towards the Manchester United goal. Mitoma taking on Wambasaka, getting into the area, beating two players, going down under pressure from Anthony and Wambasaka. Andre Mariner was on the scene and refuses to give a penalty. Well, it looked like a sandwich. And the Brighton player was in the middle of it, Kauro Matoma. The referee says no, play on, and Fred gallops up the other end. Manchester United now on the attack. Caicedo robs him of the ball, turns it over once again. And now it's with Billy Gilmore, still Kauro Matoma. I don't know if he's down injured or he's just absolutely perplexed as to why he hasn't got a penalty, but he's up and moving again, throwing his arms in the air. Well, he's got a thesis. He wrote his thesis for his sports science degree 
in dribbling. And certainly you could see the product of all that study there, couldn't you, as he weaved his way in from the left-hand side. Yeah, there is no doubt that he can certainly dribble. He is a handful and a half going into the box. And the slightest touch, he's going to ground. Ball down the left-hand side into Fernandez inside the area for Manchester United. Left foot is shot, saved by Steele towards his left-hand side. Pushes the ball wide of the goal. And then Rashford goes down under pressure in the corner and the referee doesn't give a foul for that either. Play on. Here is uh, Estepinian away up towards the halfway line. Eric Ten Hag is asking the question again. I think this is a product of players diving and getting away with it and knowing they can get away with it all the time. I'm so not they've only got themselves to blame. No, I'm not saying? suggesting that wasn't a, a foul or, or contact of any description. We've just seen it again. The players know that and throw themselves on the floor and there's, there's no sort of jeopardy to it anymore. Well, he's been told to get up, Anthony, after doing just the same. And then, idiotically, he's gone over and he's just kicked McAllister. Now, there's a bit of a chest pump going on between Dunk and Anthony. Not advisable. Fred gets in the way of it and drags him away. Most of the players, apart from Casemiro, who's not stupid, again, <laughs> involved in the situation. Casemiro's just walked away as if to say, it's nothing to do with me, honest. And uh, the referee's got a bit of sorting out to do. Sam, there's been about four or five incidents if you have been really critical and you're a referee you could have booked players for diving the referee's not done that and this is the sum total of it so do you think it's the referee's fault for not taking action earlier I think it's the authority's fault for not backing the referees and empowering the referees and supporting the referees as an overhaul scenario not just tonight looking at a referee and saying it's his fault for not booking diving because they get hung out to dry on a regular basis the referees I think the authorities have got to come down strong on this and start looking back at each situations and saying sorry unacceptable three game ban the problem was is Anthony didn't get the free kick that he wanted was furious about it and then he just decided to go he did just go and decide to kick Alexis McAllister that basically is a red card on another day he's just run over and you know there was premeditation on it so he's kicked McAllister and then he's gone and pushed Dunk so actually he could have been booked twice there couldn't he in all honesty I've seen players get a red for the first one but the scenario is Sam as you know players throwing themselves on the floor and it just gets more and more heated well it's still nil-nil and we have got 11 men each on the pitch at this moment in time. We'll see if that continues. The ball is out on the far side the right. We wouldn't want to spoil the game now after what has been a thriller of encounter, but it is slipping away from Manchester United. It does feel like that with 20 minutes to go. And Brighton, who have been fitter, sharper, crisper in this second half than Manchester United, have just lost the ball to Casemiro. Up it goes to Martial. Didn't turn quick enough. The run by Rashford on the far side was immediate and purposeful but he wasn't found Fred has got it now he does find Rashford out on the far side being backed up by Dallow he skates up towards the edge of the area cuts in on his right foot stops and goes back away again because he's got blue shirts in front of him turns the ball infield to Shaw and then Shaw exchanges passes with Dallow who comes back across the pitch oh, and gives the ball away and Casemiro has to dive in with a tackle to stop Kaoru Matoma from breaking away again. Fernandez into Fred, round the corner for Martial, wasn't paying attention. Into the arms of Jason Steele. It's, it's almost an impossible game to call, I think, you know. It's who's got the most energy left in the tank, who hasn't. <laughs> But we're so lucky, aren't we, sitting here where we are. Ten rows back from the uh, edge of the uh, technical area. Roberto De Zerbi's been calmed down by his assistant. Chris Kavanagh, the fourth official, is getting an absolute mouthful from Roberto De Zerbi. He's had a few from Eric Ten Hag as well. Here is Solly March moving up to the edge of the box, into the area he goes, looking for uh, Welbeck. Is that Undav who's just been called back by... Uh, Roberto De Zerbi to come on as a substitute. Here is Sinciso, challenged by Casemiro. Careful. It's once again another one where he could have been in trouble. The ball worked up towards the middle of the opposition half and then it comes back again because Manchester United didn't take care of the ball. Wambasaka forward. Now Fernandez. Rashford has gone through the middle and Martial's peeled out to the left. He's got it now, Martial. Left side into the area. Goes past Webster. Pulls it back through a six yard box. Blocked by Caicedo. It's out for a corner. Really? Listen, the game is just swinging from end to end. 
both teams are demonstrating they've not got the killer edge at the moment tonight and it's just waiting for somebody just to to grab the ball by the horns and put the ball in the back of the net and you're thinking that one goal will decide it at this stage Undav about to come on and Levi Colwell is coming on too for uh, Brighton and Hove Albion who are defending a set piece away to our right hand side a corner kick that Manchester United are going to curl him from the right boot of Bruno Fernandes he addressed the ball once stopped and now he's going to address it again he's going to play it short to Shaw gets it back again sends it to Rashford who's 25 yards from goal right footed shot which cannons into the air off Welbeck and gets it back again sends it wide Fernandez a yard in from the touchline down the left for Rashford Rashford being chased by Solly March gets knocked to the floor by Solly March gets back up again because he felt he should have had more protection Fernandez sends it towards the far post Lindelof is there comes back out towards Casemiro who turned and fired back towards goal and I tell you what it actually wasn't that far away bearing in mind it looked like a wild swipe he did brilliantly to get his body wrapped around and get that close to the target well he did Anthony was coming in to unload one potentially with his left foot but Casemiro got there first as you say the body shape was really good just couldn't keep it down and he's not the first tonight is he not to get a, an effort on target and that's been the uh, problem of the game so far that the chances that have come both teams way just haven't ended up on target you're listening to Talk Sport we've played uh, 74 minutes now and it's still nil-nil remarkably nil-nil on Talk Sport with Car Finance 24-7 search Car Finance 24-7 today Alan Brazil back on breakfast tomorrow with Ray Parler to pour over this and all of the weekend's footballing action right footed shot from Inciso from the edge of the area goes wide of the right hand upright and he's had a couple of sighters tonight he's another youngster in CISO, who's announced himself in recent weeks, the Diamond of Paraguay, they call him. Two goals and two assists in his last five games. The expected goals this evening, Sam, will be up around 30, I think, for, for the half chances we've had. And Manchester United are going to make a couple of changes as well. Jaden Sancho and Sabitz are coming off on Welbeck and Gilmore coming off for Colwell and Undav does that mean a change in formation for Brighton it'd be interesting to see actually looks as though Webster's slid to right back by the looks of things I'm not sure they've gone to a five no, I think uh, is it Caicedo just moved into midfield hasn't he so yes. Webster I think has gone to well I was going to say Actually, I think they might have gone to a three at the back. Let's just watch it because yeah. if Dutch just wandered into midfield. <laughs> yeah, if they've gone to a three, then it's Solly March right wing back with Toma yeah. left wing back, and they're balanced off accordingly. So someone's got to go into midfield though, because Cole, well, Webster and Dunk three centre halves, and then there's Esther Pinion who would be the spare part. So it will be interesting to see how they balance that out. We'll keep an eye on it. Sabitzer is on for. Uh, Fred, Jaden Sanchini, Jaden Sanchini, Jaden, Jaden Sancho is on for Anthony. <laughs> I made them into one person there, which <laughs> I don't think they will be too happy with. Uh, but Jaden Sancho is on. Ball given away, edge of the area by Manchester United. And CISO's got it again once more. Taking it wide towards the left hand side. Travels into the box, takes on Casemiro. Right footed, bit high over the top of everyone. It goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our left. Yeah, it, as I say, the only thing this game's missing really is clinical finishing. As I say, both teams have created good half chances, good shooting chances, but the lack of work in the goalkeeper on a regular basis has been their evidence to see. I think more so Webster's dropping into a right back position. As I say, he's quite comfortable in that area of the pitch, so. It'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with Sabitzer, who's got hold of the ball now. He's trying to get away from Levi Colwell, who just sort of dragged him to the floor. And it's a yellow card. He's only been on the pitch a couple of seconds, and he's already picked up a yellow card, Levi Colwell. Yeah, really poor there. He looked way off the pace, to be fair. He stepped in to the midfield area, got done, and then from that moment onwards, it was a booking waiting to happen. It does look like a narrow back four, and then you've got March and Matoma on the wings here for uh, Brighton the free kick is going to be given to Manchester United Marcus Rashford 
I would say usually he's surely not going to hit it from this sort of range but the way he's placing the ball down gives me indication that he might Luke Shaw and Bruno Fernandes are standing there as well and we will go off to the game in the championship in just a second and find out whether or not Huddersfield are safe for another season in the second tier of English football Chris Kavanagh and Eric Ten Hag are uh, having a heated conversation Rashford strikes the ball towards the middle of the goal he did go straight through the wall it bounces once and will go off into uh, the evening at the John Smiths and Alan Biggs Huddersfield are safe and he's done it again Huddersfield 1 Sheffield United nil. another wonder of Neil Warnock's world to add to eight promotions and previous relegation escapes Reading are down as a result Huddersfield rode their luck in the opening half Sheffield United missed chances but the half time talk was the turnaround the Terriers tore into it and Danny Ward's 25 yarder was a fitting and deserved match winner Huddersfield Save Huddersfield one, Sheffield United nil. Danny Ward's first goal since March, only his fifth goal of the season, is a crucial one for Huddersfield. The relegation pitcher sorted in the championship with Reading going down and Huddersfield staying up, courtesy of that uh, victory tonight against Sheffield United. Napoli have won the Serie A title for the first time since Maradona's day with a draw against Udinese tonight. So they are title winners, and here it's still Brighton nil, Manchester United. Nil with 79 minutes on the clock. And Manchester United have just won a free kick just five yards in front of the centre circle. Fernandez immediately tries to distribute it to uh, Rashford. Doesn't quite get on the end of it. The offside flag was up anyway. Almost got hold of it. Jason still came rushing out. Didn't quite get contact with the ball. It almost fell to the England man, but the offside flag was out because he think he just went a little bit early. Yeah, he did. Top quality decision, I've got to say there, by the officials and still was uh, sharp off his line just to deal with that he certainly was finally poised here at the Amex Stadium between Brighton and Manchester United live on Talk Sport Matoma had the best chance in the first half when he hit the ball straight at David De Gea for Brighton Rashford, Anthony, Martial have all gone close since then for Manchester United United know that a victory would take them above Newcastle Brighton well, they know that they could put pressure on the teams above them, Aston Villa and Tottenham in particular, if they manage to get all three points. Super League game tonight, is there? There is a Super League game on, and Hull are still in front against Wigan. But actually, the reason you've asked that is because I was on my iPad, and I'm on my iPad because I want to know a little bit more about Colwell. All right. Well, I was actually asking because I wanted to... I know you're a massive fan of Super League, and... Uh, Hull and uh, uh, Wigan who's are your allegiances up to Hull and Wigan anywhere uh, Tony Smith good friend of mine the Hull uh, coach but certainly Wigan are level points with Warrington my team so I want them beaten tonight if possible so double whammy I'm, I'm delighted to say that today you've turned up in normal clothes and not a Wigan Warriors top or a West Ham United top you know what I'm like with a freebie, my friend. Wigan, did I say Wigan Warriors? I meant Warrington Wolves, didn't I? Sorry, alright, OK. Rugby league geek behind me. <laughs> Hull KR fan, Adrian Durham. <laughs> Sorry. Did I mean... <laughs> did I cause you more grief there? Don't hit me, it's not fair. I can't respond, I've got a microphone in my hand. Uh, ball is <laughs> on the uh, halfway line with Esther Pinion down the left hand side played into Matoma who slips and falls over and then it's picked up by uh, David De Gea in front of the goal away to our left hand side and uh, eventually they'll clear it away this is Talk Sport 59% possession for Brighton Manchester United 41 15 shots each 5 for Manchester United on target 3 on target for Brighton uh, Rashford trying to get through the middle of the park Levi Colwell comes and tries to claim just about gets hold of the ball and clears it away played for Huddersfield last season in the championship Levi Colwell on loan from Chelsea product of their academy actually uh, scored an own goal in the uh, game at Wembley here is uh, March trying to get into the penalty area tackled by Lindelof comes back on the edge of the box Webster plays it intelligently around the corner and then a slip as he tried to strike from Undav and then it comes off Shaw and goes behind and away for a corner with eight minutes to go and just looking at the stats and I think both teams have almost got I think efforts at goal somewhere in the upper teens which is incredible when you consider what are we 15-15 
15-15. Unbelievable, isn't it? Well, it certainly is when you consider the scorelines 0-0. <laughs> Corner. Might not be 0-0 by the time we finish in eight minutes' time. Corners who come in for Brighton and Alexis McAllister will take it. Up goes Dunk. So did Webster. The ball breaks loose inside the 18-yard box. It's cleared away by Bruno Fernandes, but there wasn't any escape route. And they come back with Matoma down the left side. Oh, he had loads of space on the outside. Tried to come in. Phil played it against Juan Bissaka. It's blocked and goes behind and away for a corner. Yeah, the longer the game's gone on, the more Matoma gets you off your seat and then plonks you back down on it with disappointment, <laughs> doesn't he, you know? He, he's real handful. I think Wambasaka certainly lo maybe lost on points in the first half, but he's on top of the job at the moment in the second. Joint top scorer in the Brighton team this season, Kaoru Matoma, the Japanese international who was excellent at the World Cup. The corner kick's going to be taken on the near side by Solly March, left-footed. It's a high one towards the far post. Dealt with by Dallow, headed out to the far side and collected by uh, Alexis McAllister. Vout Veghorst about to come on for Manchester United. Webster keeps it alive. Undav trying to get the better of uh, Lindelof, who goes down. Free kick given to Manchester United. They'll make a change here. Anthony Martial? Yeah, for Veghorst. That's the change. What are your thoughts on Veghorst for next year if you were United? Would you just let him go back? Obviously, he's contracted at Burnley, isn't he? So well, still... it's interesting because there isn't much clarity about how much money Eric Ten Hag is going to have in the summer. He admitted that he was in the dark because of the ownership saga, leaving everyone in limbo. To me, it looks as if they're going to try and sign a striker. Harry Kane seems to be the priority, but he's not the only one they're looking at, and that's not going to be an easy deal to do with Daniel Levy. Um, there's no suggestion that Veghorst is the answer. I think that's clearly apparent. But I don't know whether or not Eric Ten Hag will feel as if he's a good weapon to have in the Arsenal in situations where you might need someone, for example, because there'll be a lot of games next season. Yeah, and he strikes me as a really good professional. Um, he loves being at Man United. Yeah, well, it's either that or Burnley, isn't it, really, at the moment, so... Um, the bottom line is, I think you're, you're exactly right in what you're saying, you know. Here's yeah. Fernandez into the centre. It's half cleared. Um, someone you would think they should sign just to, just to keep around? Well, I think to have a bigger on the bench is a really good thing, especially the way the game's gone, the size of the benches this day and age. I really do. Yeah, well, the size of the benches are big enough to actually house him, which is also good. Because <laughs> he is tall, lean and slender, but... Uh, he's very, very, very big, and he works. He actually works his socks off for the, for the cause as well. He's brilliant leading the press from the front. Fernandez, who was fouled from behind by Caicedo, referee says play on. It's on to uh, the edge of the penalty area towards Sabitzer from uh, the right side, where it was kept in by Casemiro. But now the break is on for Brighton, and they race over halfway. And it's Solly March at speed, running diagonally from right into the centre. Gets onto his left foot, takes on Shaw, skips past him, shoots towards the far corner. It's only narrowly wide. He thought that was the moment. He thought it was the moment he would lay the ghost of Wembley. He jinked past the Manchester United defence. He picked it up inside his own half. He scampered forward. He ran diagonally to the edge of the box, was engaged once, went past the first man, Casemiro, then past Shaw, got it onto his left foot, drove it back across the face of goal, and it wasn't too far wide. You've almost got a situation which has happened many times in this game that the players have almost done. The set-up work's been that good. They've done all the hard work and then failed to hit the target. Brian nil, Manchester United nil. The latest odds are available at Labrooks. 4-1, 4-1 four four for Brighton to go on and win the game. Manchester United 6-1 to one to go on and win the game. The draw is 11-4 to four on. It's all thanks to Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com, 18+. plus. BigGambleAware.org. Caicedo, Undav, is there a late winner in this game? Undav goes for the return down the right side from Enciso and it's cleared away by David De Gea. We're in the 87th minute of the match. This intriguing match between these two European hopefuls. Manchester United almost certain of a place in the top four. Their goal difference is very good. Their position in the table, pretty solid. This will give them a five-point gap to Liverpool and a game in hand. And a ten-point gap back to Spurs in six and a game in hand over them as well. They've still got uh, a game in hand on Arsenal as well. Not that they're likely to catch them. They're 14 points behind. Uh, top four seems to be 
grabbable for Manchester United, especially with the fixtures that they've got still to come. They've got West Ham away on Sunday live on Talk Sport. Wolverhampton Wanderers, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Fulham, Manchester City in the cup final to finish their season. By then, we'll know whether or not they're playing Champions League football next year, which surely they will. Veghorst chases the ball down towards the edge of the area. Dunk gets it back to his goalkeeper. Veghorst continues to chase. Sancho presses with Dunk on the near side. They play out beautifully. Brighton have come up over the halfway line now. Picked up by Estepinian, who runs forward, feeds the ball into the box. It's too far for Undav. Just a little bit too heavy from the Ecuadorian. He's produced six assists in 2023 alone. And with a little bit more of a delicate touch in that moment, might have provided another. You can see why they've hit a team for six recently, Brighton. You know, they've just been a fraction off tonight. And, uh, well, both teams have in front of goal. I think probably over the 90, Manchester United uh, probably just lost out a little bit. They, Brighton have just shaded it, I think. But it hasn't finished yet. Webster slides it forward, cut out by Shaw. Just tucked out to the near side, taking no chances. It goes out for a throw-in. They want to get it moving quickly, Brighton. They do that. Esther Pinyan into Enciso. Sancho comes across on this near side. Caicedo plays around Fernandes. It's through the legs of Casemiro. Enciso looking for Rundown. Shaw tries to bring it clear. Thinks he should have got a foul. Eventually does get one. And it's going to be a free kick 10 yards in front of the 18-yard box. And it's going to be a uh, free kick to Manchester United. Are probably going to run down the clock now, bearing in mind that there is just a minute of normal time to play. Jason Steele's been given the man of the match, I think maybe for his first half display rather than his second. He did make one really good save in the second half, but most of his work was done in the first 45 minutes. Roberto De Zerbi looking a little bit pensive. How will he be feeling tonight? I think coming out of this game, he'll be disappointed they've not taken all three points, but I think he'll be absolutely delighted with the way his team have played and set up. It's been a, just as both teams have come out with so much credit. Matoma sweeping clear. Brighton determined to try and finish the job off here. Five minutes of added time are going to be added here as March gets into the area. Oh, it's opened up in front of him. He's still going and he wandered too far. Comes back to McAllister. Great save by David De Gea. It came from a crowd of players. He had to react. And David De Gea displaying, he has still got all his faculties. He read that beautifully. March wandered into the 18-yard box, cut in on his left foot, ran down a blind alley. It broke to McAllister. Undav opened his legs. It went through them. And David De Gea was alert enough to stop it. What a chance, Stuart. Brilliant effort. I thought March was going to be the one to break the deadlock at one stage, but he sort of run aground with ideas, if you like, and when it burst to McAllister, his effort was magnificent and an equally good save on that occasion. March with a corner in towards Webster over the bar. Big header from a big player, but couldn't control it and keep it down and get it under the crossbar. Good delivery once again from the set piece from Solly March. It's going to be a free kick away, a goal kick away to our left-hand side. If you're just joining us, Huddersfield are safe in the championship. Fantastic effort from Neil Warnock, who's kept them up. Reading have been relegated as a result of that. Elsewhere, Napoli have won the Serie A title. Here it's nil-nil. Hull FC have beaten Wigan Warriors by 14 points to nil. Stuart Pearce can proudly wear his Warrington Wolves tracksuit. I will be tomorrow. I'm going up to watch a game against Wakey. And uh, big Hull FC fan, Adrian Durham, <laughs> is cheering behind me. He's a floating fan, actually, a feel-good factor fan. Yeah, I know a few of those, by the way. Talk Sport, 92 minutes on the clock. Nil-nil as it was in the FA Cup semi-final in stoppage time. There's no extra time and penalties this time around to settle the encounter. It either will or will be will not be settled in the next three minutes, live on Talk Sport. A draw probably suits Manchester United better than it does Brighton. Brighton, though, are about to surpass their club record of 52 points in a top-flight season set during a 42-game campaign in 1981-82. That's how good this season has been, and there's still fixtures to come and plenty of them. They have scored 11 goals in the final 15 minutes of games, Brighton. They are 
kings of the late goal. Can they come up with another one before the conclusion here? Here's Caicedo in the centre circle. March picks it up. Moves it forward. It's picked up by Esther Pinyan, who's going to let rip here. Left-footed in towards the near post. Saved down low by David De Gea. Yeah, I think it's one of those games, no matter what happens, the deadlock will not be broken this evening. Um, and I've got to commend both sets of players. The only downside, players going to ground a bit cheaply. Apart from that, I don't want to sour the taste on the night. This has been a magnificent game. It has been a gripping affair. Manchester United now will have won only one of their last 14 Premier League away games against the team starting the day in the top half of the Premier League table. What does that say? Well... <laughs> I think United can go toe to toe with anybody if I'm being honest with you it's just they've got to find that level of consistency on the road maybe Sam Undav trying to turn past Lindelof and CISO tries to get past Shaw who knocks him over and there's a little bit of afters between the two Andre Marin has given the free kick actually and Alexis McAllister immediately looks over and says I'll have a piece of this thank you very much is that a foul? no and CISO will infuriate the life out of you. He's impressed me tonight with his football, but he's certainly going to ground very, very cheaply. And uh, ask Luke Shaw whether he touched him or not. Well, the free kick has been given. It is 12 yards outside the area, so this is 30 yards from goal. David De Gea will probably think he shouldn't be beaten from here. I don't think Solly March or Alexis McAllister are thinking of trying to shoot on sight which means it probably favours a march delivery towards the far edge of the penalty area, arcing it left-footed, an outswinger for someone to attack. Colwell, Webster, Dunk are up from the back. It is Solly March who drifts it towards that far post, and the header is from Veghorst, it goes behind and away for a corner. Yeah, I think they were caught in two minds there. It was a little bit straight for a cross, a little bit too deep for a strike at goal. Goes out towards the far side then for the corner. Maybe the last action of the game. We're into the final minute of added time at the end of the 90 on Talk Sport. Loads of chances, no goals. Nil-nil, a point apiece in the offing. Here on Talk Sport, with Manchester United staying in the top four and Brighton still looking on at the European places if it stays this way, but they've had got games in hand, the corner arced in towards the penalty spot, up towards Dunn, headed away as far as Matoma, he's got to hit it, he does hit it, towards the far corner, it hits someone and gone out towards the far side, back in through a six-yard box, comes through to Caicedo punched away by David De Gea it's a massive save it's an absolutely gigantic save from the Spanish goalkeeper who reacted to the effort from Caicedo and somehow has managed to steer it away from the Manchester United goal well, I'll tell you what, I don't know whether he's blown up, I don't know exactly what's going on here. I've never seen so much happen in such a short space of time. There was a shout from the crowd for a handball, and then there was a, a cross shot, then there was a brilliant save, incredible. Well, there was a hand inside there the penalty area, and there's a handball check going on as a result of that. Was it Luke Shaw's hand that went up in the air and touched it with his fingers? I think he did, but if he was being pushed from the back, it might change. Andre Mariner is walking over towards the near side. I think he's going to check the monitor here. He is. There yeah. could be late drama. Now, you might remember a couple of seasons ago, Manchester United won a game here with a penalty because of a handball given by VAR after the final whistle. Now in stoppage time, well over the five minutes that should have been allotted, Brighton are going to get a penalty. Yeah, and rightly so. As I say, I knew that so much went on there. The crowd nearer, um, nearer the, the incident certainly all went up en masse. It took it, Luke Shaw's took it straight off a dunk. Penalty head. given. 26 minutes and 27 seconds into the game. It's a penalty for Brighton and Hove Albion. Remember, they lost out on a place in the cup final on penalties to Manchester United just 11 days ago. Now, they've scored all six penalties in regulation time. Surely they're not going to give it to shot Solly March. McAllister has taken them in the Premier League so far this season, and he's five from five. He's the regular taker. Well, all I can say at this stage is the way things have been going in this game, 
it won't be scored. <laughs> Well, the Manchester United fans are biting their nails to the quick. The United players are trying to delay the taking of the spot kick. McAllister stayed out of the way. He's going to make sure that he doesn't end up getting pressurised any further than he needs to, but it's taken a long time. It's already taken a minute since the referee gave the penalty after looking at the VAR. We're in the 98th minute of the game now. McAllister is going to place the ball down. The Brighton fans trying to suck it into the net. This could be huge. He has a powerful, precision-like delivery. He goes through his process, takes four steps back, moves towards the edge of the penalty area. He's going to arc his run-up. It's against De Gea, who didn't get near any of the penalties in the shootout at Wembley between the two. McAllister is an expert, a World Cup winner, a chance to give Brighton all three points for the third time in a row against Manchester United. There's a hush around the Amex Stadium as he waits, gulps, runs up, right footed, slams it in. And what you can hear in the background is the roar of 30,000 seagulls planning a European tour because Brighton's dream of setting sail for Europe for the first time are very much alive. A 99th minute penalty from Alexis McAllister will give Brighton all three points at the Amex. Great drama from the Premier League. Brighton 1, Manchester United 0. Well, I've got to say in this second half, there's been an absolute blue tide that have taken the game of United. And as you rightly say, they're the team that looks as though they've been chasing the result and needed the result that little bit more. And it's probably no less than they deserve. What an incredible night's football we've had here. Luke Shaw's handball spotted by VAR. Andy Madley in the booth in Stockley Park has changed the tide and it's changed the table as well because Brighton will be going up into sixth position as a result of what is a fabulous, fabulous victory for them. A brilliant game. The celebrations amongst the coaching staff tell their own story. Roberto De Zerbi's calm. No one else in his battalion is. And the whole team celebrate away to our right-hand side, knowing that that could be a crucial three points. Champions League, well, no one's having a laugh now. If Brighton win their game in hand over Manchester United and Newcastle, they'll be eight points behind them with five to play. They face Newcastle live on TalkSport on May the 18th. And all of a sudden, there's just a glint of a possibility Brighton will surely now be playing European football of some sort next season and they are elbowing their way up the table playing catch up on fixtures and taking no prisoners United again fail on the road at some one half decent it's been the tail of their tape over the course of the season a brilliant game finishes Brighton 1 Manchester United 0 astonishing drama from the Premier League live and exclusive on TalkSport what a noise inside the Amex Stadium it was definitely handball it was definitely a penalty and it was definitely rammed into the top corner by Alexis McAllister and I'll tell you what Stuart Pearce Roberto De Zerbi couldn't watch he was facing us he couldn't watch the penalty being taken but he knew this crowd told him that penalty undoubtedly hit the back of the net well I've got to say Aid, it was a wonderful high pressure penalty brilliant penalty by the way right in the top corner and this game deserved a winner like that, I think. Brighton deserved it. Their tactical approach was magnificent. I've got to give a footnote to United. They played their part in this encounter. This was one of the best games I've seen all season. It was magnificent. And when you look at the stats, Brighton, Boston, 60% possession. But have a look at the chances, Stuart. We're talking about 40 efforts on goal between the two sides. Double figures, efforts on target. Magnificent game of football. This is what the Premier League's all about. Well, to see a side like Brighton, Brighton have gone toe-to-toe 
whatever you think of United, whether you think they're a big team or whether you don't at this moment in time, they're a top four, top six team. And Brighton have gone toe-to-toe with them in this building process that is Brighton. And is European football up ahead for them? Who knows? If it is and they hold on to this squad of players or, or keep developing they're going to be a tough nut to crack in Europe. The Amex has turned into a nightclub and nobody's going home. They all want to party with the players as the Man United players leave the field. The Brighton 11 are out there and they're all dancing and they're celebrating. Meantime, it is time now for us to pick our Man of the Match with Car Finance 24-7. Man of the Match on TalkSport with Car Finance 24-7. Sort your finance first, so you can choose a car with confidence. Search Car Finance 24-7 today. Representative APR 19.9%. Car Finance 24-7 is a credit broker, not a lender. Well, Stuart Pearce, I think there's a few contenders. It's such a good game. Who's got your vote? Well, it's going to have to be someone in a blue shirt. and I'm going to go for Lewis Dunk. I thought he was magnificent tonight. He dealt with the ball. They built attacks, him and Webster, really well. I think right through the team, if I could give it a whole team, I would for Brighton. But I think Lewis Dunk, for me, stood out head and shoulders in a magnificent game with some magnificent performances. And a magnificent commentary as well. Lewis Dunk, our man of the match from today's game with Car Finance 24-7. Search Car Finance 24-7 today. <laughs> 